to a thousand generations to come. Protect God, my children. Protect, oh God, my grandchildren. Protect my spiritual children and grandchildren, Lord. Father, protect them. Rakata boshentele bazai. Rika yantala boseketema. Takatifu wa takatifu. Mwenye ensi na mamlaka ni wewe. Nina chotaka ni we. Ni wewe tu. Nina chotaka ni we. Ni wewe tu. Aja ya moyo wangu. Ni Yesu tu. Aja ya moyo wangu. Ni Yesu tu. Ni nachotaka. Ni nachotaka ni we. Ni wewe tu. Kwa watoto wangu. Ni nachotaka ni we. Ni wewe tu. Haja ya moyo wangu ni Yesu tu. Haja ya moyo wangu ni Yesu tu. Taka tumadizie tunapoombea taifa letu taifa la Kenya. Hili ni taifa barikiwa. Wakati wote tunamusikia mungu wakinena kwa sababu ya taifa la Kenya. It's a blessed nation. Wa Kenya hata wafai kutoka hapa kwenda kutafuta makazi mahali. Tunaona wakati mwingine watoto wetu, like juzi nimekuwa na msichana alikuja hapa kutoka Saudi. Akani naretia ile historia. She was only there for three months I think. Not three months, around nine months. Alienda April. Sijua hata kama zimefika nine. Alienda April na alirudi last week but one. Alipoingia hapa Kenya, kashindwa mahali pa kuenda, alinipigia simu akanembe Mary nilikujua ukiwa JTM. Naomba nikuje mahali huko I allowed her to come here by good luck akapata msichana ambaye tunafanya na yeye huduma mahali hapa, alikuwa rafiki yake. Nikamwambia enda umpeleke kwako akaenda na ye. She narrated to me what she and she what while at Saudi. Alipitia magumu. Yala ambao ukiambiwa, wezi ambia mtoto wako aende kazi. Tambia mtoto wako kaa hapa Kenya. Kaa hapa, lima shamba, kula mazao ya hii shamba. Na mimi najue kwa mba taifa la Kenya linapendwa na mungu. That is why when our children go there, wanapitia mambo kama hao, because God is reminding them about his nation. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the nation that the Lord is his God. Hallelujah. Kenya ni nyumba ya mungu ya maombi. Na mimi sijawai yona mtu wakapiga magoti chini akaombata ya liniambia kilicho muokoa pale. Because the plan of her bosses were to kill her. Kilicho muokoa pale ni maombi. Wana isu asifiwe. Na je tukiomba tukiwa katika taifa mbalo mungu anataka tuombe. Maana mungu anamuambia Solomoni ya kwamba. Ame pachagua mahali pale watu wake wakiona njaa, wakiona shida. Wasiombe huko mahali wameonea shida. Wakuje hapa. Waombe hapa. Kama tutaombea mahali ambapo mungu amechagua kama taifa la Kenya. God is able to answer our prayers. Mwana isu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo anataka tulikabidi taifa la Kenya mbele za mungu. Ya kwamba kama kuna mtu wataenda kutafuta kazi nje. Wacha iwe ni kwa mapenzi ya mungu na isiwe kazi ya utumwa. Isijia ikawa kazi ambao mtu wanaenda na haende kunyanyaswa. Iwe ni kazi ambao mtu watakuwa na freedom ya kufanya kazi. Mtu wakirudi hata watu wake wakisema mfulani ya kongambo. Haijalishi ni ngambo gani. Hata kama ni Uganda, hata kama ni Sudan. Itakuwa kwamba ni ukweli ya kongambo because we respect ngambo. Sini kweli. Tuna respect ngambo. Ngambo yoyota hata kama ni Uganda. Wacha mtu waenda wafanye kazi na aone matunda ya mikono yake. 
Kwa hivyo kama kuna roho yoyote ila ambayo inapeleka watoto wetu ngambo ambayo haifai. Ngambo ambayo ni kama Babiloni. Mahali ambapo watoto wetu they cannot sing a song of Zion. Mahali ambapo hawawezi imba wimbo wa Zayuni. Tuombe ya kwamba hizo barabara zikafungwe na Mungu afungulie watoto wetu njia ambazo wataenda kuimba nyimbo za Zayuni. Praise the Lord. Tuliombe taifa la Bwana. Kabidi taifa la Bwana, taifa la Kenya mikononi mwa Mungu. Bwana anasema ya kwamba iwapo watu wangu walioitwa kwa jina langu watanyenyekea na kuacha njia zao mbaya na wanirudie waombe hapo nitasikia maombi yao nitawajibu na nitaiponya inji yao kama kazi imekuwa magonjwa katika taifa la Kenya God is saying is coming to heal our land katika jina la Yesu Kristo our father our god our redeemer we call unto your name my father because of the nation of Kenya today my God, we ask of your mercies, Jehovah, unto this nation, my Lord, the nation that desires to know more of you. Wakati mwingi baba, manabi wako, watu wako, umewaonyesha ya kwamba tabada ya corona. Kuna mambo magumu yala mbaya na kuja mbeletu baba tutaweza kushinda vipi. Wewe mungu kama hauta tushindania katika hili taifa la Kenya baba. Tunakuita, ukatuwezeshe na ukatushindanie kwa utukufu wa jina lako asante bwana maana unatupenda kwa ajili ya taifa la Kenya baba tunakuita kapate kuonekana na ukapate kutukuka milele yote katika hili taifa asante kwa utukufu wa jina lako asante baba kwa nguvu yako asante kwa roho wako mtakatifu asante kwa sauti yako ya kipekee asante baba kwa neema yako katika taifa la Kenya bwana wacha ukapate kuonekana ukituinua katika taifa hili na utukufu na sifa baba tutakurudishia wewe hakuna mungu mwingine aliye kama na wewe tumeamua baba tujiingize katika ma maombi haya kwa sababu tunajua kwamba wewe ni Mungu unayejibu maombi pokea sifa pokea utukufu asubuhi ya leo ni kwa maana Bwana unatupenda asante Mungu wetu asante kwa kujibu maombi thank you jesus father we love you we bless your name asante jehova amen wacha tumshukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya session hiyo ijapokuwa tumekula muda mwingi lakini jua Mungu yuko na sababu Baba Mungu katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunasema ni asante kwa sababu ya masamba umetupatia katika maombezi. Tunajua wewe ni jawabu letu, sifa yetu, kinga letu na ngome yetu. Tunakutukuza baba kwa maombi yale ambayo tumeomba mahali hapa. Maana tunajua kwamba Mungu umeyapokea. Na wewe ni Mungu unayeenda pia kuyajibu. Jibu baba watoto wako. Jibu baba katika madhabahu haya. Kwa kuwa hakuna mungu anayenena juu ya madhabahu haya kama si wewe. Sisi ni vyombo tu umetuweka mali hapa. Tunalo fanya baba ni mapenzi yako. Siku hii ya leo baba turusu tukanene kwa sababu ni wewe mungu na nena. Na kabidi mualimu wa subui katika mikono yako. Na kabidi muubiri wetu katika mikono yako. Mungu watumie kama vyombo vyako. Vyombo vya damana mbavyo siku ya leo umechagua. Ili vikaweze kutumika. Asante Jehova. Asante Mungu aishe milele. Wakati naamini kwamba neno lako linakuja kwetu baba, ni vipawa vyetu baba vinajaribiwa katika moto. Na neno lako ni moto Bwana. Wacha mwisho wa kila neno, yawe ni mafundisho, iwe ni maubiri. Vipawa vyetu baba vikawe ya kwamba vimepata kushinda jaribio hilo la moto na tukavishwe taji. Kila moja akafurahie kwa kupokea neno lako. Kila moja baba katabasamu anapopokea neno lako, winuliwe na ukapate kuabudiwa. Na ni kwa Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kushukuru. Salimia mwenzako, mwambie karibu katika ibada ya subuhi ya leo. Karibisha mtu. Karibisha mtu katika ibada ya subuhi ya leo. Haleluya. Napomkaribisha mwalimu wetu akatuongoze katika kazi ya Bwana. Karibu mwalimu. Bwana asifiwe. Haleluya.
Nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya asubuhi hii ya leo. Ametupa fursa nyingine tena ya kupatikana katika nyumba yake. Bwana asifiwe sana. Tuko tuko hapa. Haleluya. Asante mamu. Kuna neno ambalo umenena ambalo limetia limetia uzito ndani ya moyo wangu. Na hata nikitoka katika nyumba yangu nilikuwa na huo uzito. Na nimetumiwa ujumbe na mmoja wapo wa babangu wa kiroho akiniambia kwamba tuombe watoto wetu na tuombe vijana bwana asifiwe hakika ukiangalia nyakati hizi tunafaa kuwakabidhi watoto wetu mbele za Mungu kila wakati maana vile vitu ambavyo vinatendeka kule nje wapendwa hauwezi tamani kuona bwana asifiwe wale ambao nikinena hivyo pingine mtu kama Chris Abel anaweza nielewa wale ambao tuko katika ile field nyingine zile vitu ambazo tunaona na yale maswali ambayo tunaulizwa na zile vitu ambazo unaona watoto wadogo wanakuja kununua vile ambavyo hata hawafai ukiangalia mtu ananunua kitu kuna dawa inaitwa pitu bwana asifiwe unaona mtoto ako na miaka tatu mtu ako na miaka nne anakuja kununua dawa kama hizo mtu anakuja kukuuliza nimekosea nimekuwa hivi nimepata mimba na sitaki kulea nifanyaje bwana asifiwe watoto wadogo ambao wako chini ya miaka saba wapendwa tuombe watoto wetu. Alikuwa ananikumbusha mmoja wapo wa wanahabari ambaye alikuwa hapa Kenya na akatoka kaenda majuu. Sasa hivi amekuwa ni gei. Bwana asifiwe. Tuombe watoto wetu na tuombe vijana pia. Maana hata kuna stage nyingine pia inawasukuma kufanya zile vitu ambazo hawafai kufanya. Kuna stage ambayo wanafika pia ukipatana na marafiki zao, wanafanya vile vitu ambavyo pia hawako na kusudia kufanya. Alafu kitu kingine ni iki amba sisi wazazi ambao tunatoka asubuhi tunaenda kazini pengine tunawaacha watoto wetu peke yao ama unawaacha watoto na wafanyikazi wa nyumbani haujui ni nini ambacho kinaendelea humo nyumbani wakati ambapo haupo bwana asifiwe ama wakati ambapo umewacha mto kwa nyumba ukitoka utarudi jioni utampata kiwapo lakini wakati huu mwingine wote mchana haujui mtu alikuwa wapi na haujui amekutana na nani bwana asifiwe Mara mingi nimeshuhudia na nimesikia watu wakisema kwamba mtoto ameingia kwa hizi Freemasons ili devotions na hata akatumwa akapate kuua wazazi wake kwa sababu wazazi wake pengine ni wale watu ambao wanamjua Mungu. Hasa kwa sababu hivi hii ni falme mbili ambazo zinapigana wanataka hata wauwe wazazi wao ili kwamba wakapate kupandishwa cheo mahali pale ambapo wameingia. Bwana asifiwe. Nimesikia nikiwa na uzito sana kwa sababu hilo neno nikitoka nyumbani. Na nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya mamu umeguzia mahali pale ambapo at least hata nimepata ile ile saa nimekuwa nimekuwa freed bwana asifiwe twende katika neno la Mungu ngalau muda wetu umeenda sana lakini tutajifundisha kila ambacho Mungu alikuwa amekusudia tujifunde hata kama ni kwa dakika tano kumi hivi mara nyingine tena karibuni katika ibada yetu ya asubuhi ya leo na Mungu awabariki. Kwa majina anaitwa Beti, Beti Amboka. Na ningependa tujifundishe kidogo kuhusu maneno yetu, haya maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya kinywa chetu. Maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu. Bwana asifiwe. Adhani hii ndio ndito Kiswahili sanifu. Sio kinywa chetu, kinywa chetu, vinywa vyetu. Kwa hivyo tunaenda kusoma katika kitabu cha Wakolosai. Colossians Wakolosai nne sita. Nitasoma maana mimi nimefika pale. Biblia inasema kwamba maneno yenu iyawe na neema siku zote ya kikolea munyo. Mpate kujua jinsi iwapasavyo kumjibu kila mtu. Bwana sifiwe. Tutaenda pia katika kitabu kingine cha wa Efeso Enda nami katika wa Efeso 4:29 Inasema hivi Neno lolote lililo ovu lisitoke vinywani mwenu bali lililo jema la kumfaa mwenye kuhitaji ili liwapee neema wanaosikia Bwana asifiwe katika wakolosai Biblia imesema kwamba 
ya kwamba neno lolote ya kwamba maneno ambayo yanatoka katika vinywa vinu ya kuwe ya mekolea munyo ama ya kuwe yale maneno ambayo yamekuwa seasoned maneno ambayo yametengezwa maneno ambayo yamechungwa maneno ambayo yanafaa bwana asifiwe maneno ambayo yanaweza mpa mtu tumaini ya kwamba neno lolote ambalo linatoka ndani ya kinywa chenu liwe neno la neema siku zote maneno ambayo yanakolea munyo mpate kujua jinsi wapazavyo kumjibu kila mtu bwana asifiwe maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu ni maneno ambayo yamekuwa seasoned ni swali ambayo tunaweza kujiuliza lile neno ambalo tunaongea kila mara wakati ambapo tunakutana mahali tukiwa watu wawili ndio tunajiita tumeokoka wakati ule mchungaji hayuko hapo tunaona ni kama hata Mungu pia yuko hapo bwana asifiwe tunajiona ni kana kwamba tuko peke yetu sasa tunaanza kuongea maneno mengine ambayo hayampi mtu utukufu hayampi Mungu utukufu je hayo maneno yako yanakubalika mbele za Mungu na yamekolea munyo ni maneno ambayo yanampendeza Mungu ni maneno ambayo yamechungwa yani yametengezwa ambayo hata akitoka ndani ya kinywa chako yanaweza kamponya mtu Bwana asifiwe. Unajua kuna neno ambalo unaweza niongelesha na kama nilikuwa nimeshushika sana, nipate kutiwa nguvu. Na kuna neno ambalo unaweza niongelesha wakati ambao niko chini na niendelee kuwa chini. Bwana asifiwe. Hata niseme hata nina regret kwa nini nimeenda kwa masi kumwambia hivyo. Bwana asifiwe. Je, maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya kinywa chako yana utukufu? Maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu yanaweza kamponya mtu. Maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu inaweza kahuimiza dada ambayo amekuwa na shida, amepitia changamoto ambalo anasema ya kwamba I wish ningekuwa na rafiki ambaye ninaweza enda nikamlilie ama ni mwagizo wangu. Bwana asifiwe. Je, akikuja kwako ni maneno yapi ambayo unaweza mtolea? Biblia inasema kwamba maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu yawe ni maneno ambayo yamekolea munyo maneno ambayo yanapendeza yana utamu kama chakula usipoweka chumvi wale watu ambao hawana shida ya, ya diabetic na sukari diabetic na pressure wale watu ambao hawana hizo shida wanatumia chumvi usipoweka chumvi kwa chakula ladaki inakuwaje mbaya sana. Bwana asifiwe. Hivyo ndivyo maneno yetu yalivu. Maneno yetu ni kama chumvi. Kuna wakati unaweza yatoa na yawe hayana ladha kabisa. Na kuna wakati unaweza toa neno na liwe na ladha. Bwana asifiwe. Biblia inasema kwamba maneno yetu yakue yale ambayo yanakolea munyo. Na msari wa, wa 29 hapo wa Efeso mlango wa 4. Biblia imesema kwamba ya kwamba lolote ambalo linalotoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu lile neno ambalo linatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu acha nirudie kusoma neno lolote lililo ovu lisitoke ndani ya vinywa vyetu bali lililo jema la kumfaa mwenye kuhitaji neno lolote lililo ovu lisitoke ndani ya vinywa vyetu bali lilo lililo jema la kumhitaji bwana asifiwe anaendelea na kusema kwamba na kuhitaji ili ili liwape neema wanaosikia ili likapate kuwaponya wanaosikia ili likawapate kuatia nguvu pia wale ambao wanaolisikia ili likapate kumsaidia yule mtu ambayo ako chini ambaye analisikia ili likapate kumtia nguvu yule mtu ambaye amekuwa chini kwa muda ili likapate kumtia nguvu yule mtu ambaye amekuwa mgonjwa na anaona ni kana kwamba amekata tumaini Anaona ni kama haya magonjwa siwezi pona. Lakini dada ukienda pale na neno ambalo limekolea munyo, ambalo ni neno limekuwa seasoned, ambalo ni neno la Mungu na unamwambia kwamba dadangu, haijalishi unapitia hali gani, lakini haya yote Mungu anatengeza njia ile kwamba ukapate kushuhudia siku moja. Haya yote unapitia ile kwamba Mungu akapate kujidhihirisha katika maisha yako. Wapendo hata ukitoka mahali pale. Huyo dada atakuwa na ushuhuda. Hata ukitoka mahali pale ndiye atakuwa nasikia mwili bado unauma lakini ataseme yenyewe niliambiwa nimepona na utamtia imani utafanya huyo mtu atapenda hata Mungu Unajua kuna wakati mtu anapitia hali hadi anaona Mungu amemsahau 
Anaona ni kana kwamba hakuna Mungu. Lakini wakati unaenda pale na lile neno ambalo limetoka katika Biblia, neno ambalo linapendeza, neno ambalo limekolea munyu na unamwambia kwamba mpendwa, hii hali ambayo unapitia siwe peke yako. Na hii hali ambayo unapitia Mungu haja kuacha. Simama imara, utauona wokovu wa Bwana. Hapo utakuwa umemtia nguvu hata ukienda atakupigia simu labda hata siku nyingine akwambia haki dada asante sana kwa kuja kunitembelea maana ninajisikia sasa niko sawa lakini ukienda pale na umwambia kwamba sasa na hii ugonjwa unagonjeka na hii nilisikia pia hii ugonjwa iliua mtu fulani mahali pale na mtu fulani pia niliona mtu fulani alikufa alikuwa anagonjeka tu hivi hivi bwana asifiwe utamtia moyo huyo mtu kweli Utakuwa umemshusha kiasi ya kwamba hata atajidharau na hata unaweza fanya huyo mtu commit suicide. Kwa sababu anaona ashafika mwisho na mateso yamezidi. Na hata wewe umemtia moyo ukamwambia kwamba hii haiwezi pona. Anaona hakuna lingine. Kwa sababu ya lile neno ambalo liko ndani ya, ya, ya kinywa chako. Ama lile neno ambalo umetoa ndani ya kinywa chako. Bwana asifiwe. Paulo akasema akaambia wa Korinto ya kwamba alikuwa anasema kwamba uh, hebu twende katika kitabu cha kitabu gani wa Korinto wa kwanza hapo Alikuwa anawaambia wa Korinto ya kwamba tunaongea kama watu wa ulimwengu ya kwamba wakati nilipokuwa wakati nilipokuwa mtoto na linena kama mtoto mchanga lakini wakati nilikomaa sasa ninanena kama mtu mzima utasoma unaweza soma mwenyewe first corinthians 13:11 wakati nalipokuwa mtoto na linena kama mtoto mdogo wakati nalipokuwa mtoto wakati nilikuwa sijamjua Mungu nilikuwa ninaongea kama watu wa ulimwengu Wakati nilikuwa sijajua ukweli, naliongea kama mtu ambaye si wa Mungu, niliongea kama mtu wa ulimwengu. Wakati nilikuwa sijamjua Mungu, niliongea kama watu wa mataifa, lakini wakati ambapo nilikoma. Paulo anasema kwamba wakati alikoma, ananena kama mtu mkubwa sasa. Utakoma aje? Katika maneno mengine ni wakati tulipokuwa katika ulimwengu tulinena kama watu wa ulimwengu. Leo hii tumetoka katika ulimwengu sasa tuko katika ufalme. Tunanena kama watu ambao wameokoka. Tunanena kama watu ambao wamejazwa na roho. Tunanena kama watu ambao sasa wamekuwa na taifa lingine. Bwana sifiwe. Maneno yetu yanafanana na ya ulimwengu tena. Maneno yako akifanana kama ya ulimwengu tena basi wewe bado ungali ni mtoto. Bwana sifiwe. Mana wakati ulipokuwa mtoto, wakati ulipokuwa katika ulimwengu, ulinena kama mtoto mdogo. Tabia zako za kale na za saizi ni sawa. Kuna vitu ulibadilisha ni koshua. Kuna vitu ulikuwa unafanya lakini ulibadilisha. Baada ya kupokea neema hii. Bwana sifiwe. Kuna mienendo ulizo kuwa nazo wakati ulipokuwa mtoto. Na manisho wakati ulikuwa bado uko ulimwengu. Wakati ulikuwa bara hauja okoka. Kuna vitu ulivo kuwa ukiongea. Sibu unapo ongea sahivi. Kuna vitu ulikuwa unafanya. Na sibu unapo fanya hata sahivi. Paula kasema kwa mana lipo kuwa mtoto. Na linena kama mtoto mdogo. Sahivi mini mtu mkubwa sana. Nena kama mtu mkubwa. Buwana sifiwe. Wakati tulipokuwa watoto tukiwa katika ulimwengu. Tungekaa katika vikao vya wasio waamini. Tungejadili mambo ambayo hayampendezi Mungu. Tungejadili mambo ambayo hayaletu chukufu. Kwa hivyo unasema hapana, Mungu yupo. Wakati ambapo anasema kwamba uchumi wa taifa letu umekuwa mbaya na umeharibika hata hatujui tunaenda wapi. Unasema hapana, Mungu yupo. Na haezi turuhusu tukapate kwenda mahali ambapo hatufai kwenda. Wakati ambapo watu wanalia kwamba hakuna pesa sijui nini inafanyika wewe sasa umekomaa hauongei kama mtoto hasa hiyo utawaambia kwamba hakuna lisilewezekana kwa Mungu Bwana asifiwe wakati wanasema kwamba corona imekuja kumaliza watu katika nchi hii ama katika ulimwengu waambie hapana 
Mana sasa hivi hauongei kama wao. Uambie Mungu yuko na haenzi ruhusu kitu kama hiyo ifanyike. Bwana asifiwe. Maana wakati ule mwingine ulipokuwa katika baraza la wasio amini, ulikuwa unaongea kama wao. Hasa hivi uko kwenye baraza la wanaoamini, unaongea kama wao ambao wanaamini. Bwana asifiwe. Hasa maneno yako na yao lazima yawe tofauti. Wakati ambapo tunabaki kwenye ploti zetu. Pengine haujajaliwa kwenda kazini hiyo si kama hauendi kazini. Ewe ni mke wa mahali pale tu. Wakati ambapo wanakusanyika pale kumuongea dada fulani wa nyumba fulani, ya kwamba siku hizi anaringa maana amekuwa hivi amekuwa hivi. Unachangia pia unasema kwamba he, siku hizi hata mimi ninaona amebadilika sana. Hapana. Wewe ambaye sasa umekomaa, hauongei kama mtoto. Sasa wewe ongea kama mtu ambaye umekomaa mahali pale. Waambia kwamba haiendi hivyo. Iko hivi na iko hivi. Bwana asifiwe. Nalipo kuwa mtoto na nena kama mtoto wa mdogo. Wakati nilikomaa na nena kama mtu ambaye amekomaa. Bwana asifiwe. Hebu jiulize ndani ya moyo wako ya kwamba maneno ambayo unatoa ndani ya vinywa vyetu, unatoa ndani ya kinywa chako yanampendeza Mungu. Wakati unabaki peke yako mpenga, wakati unakuwa kazini, wakati unakuwa unaona hakuna mshirika ambaye ako mahali pale ambaye anakujua. Mara mingi tunaona ni kama Mungu hayupo pale. Wakati uko peke yako uko na ufanyi kazi wenzako. Unaona ni kana kwamba Mungu sahibu amelala. Hasa unaweza fanya vyote ambavyo unaweza fanya. Ama unaweza ongea vile ambavyo unaweza ongea. Maneno yako yamekolea munyu. Maneno yako yanapendeza. Maneno yako yanampa mtu tumaini. Bwana asifiwe. Chunguza ndani ya moyo wako. Jiulize mwenyewe. Kama kweli lile neno ambalo unalitoa kila wakati ambapo mnakutana hata na hata kwenye familia wanakujua wewe kama mtu ambaye umekomaa ama wewe ungali mtoto kama wao maana wao bado labda hawajaokoka wangali ni watoto unaongea kama wao ama unatenda jinsi wanavyotenda hapana wewe ni mtu ambaye umekomaa maneno yako yamekolea munyu Mahali pale ambapo wanatafuta sulisho, wanafua kusema kwamba na Christabel ako wapi? Maana wanajua ni yeye ndiye amekoma. Si wao pia ni watu wazima. Lakini kwa nini wamtafute yeye na labda yeye ni mdogo wao? Kwa sababu katika ulimwengu wa kiroho, yeye ni mtu ambaye amekoma. Bwana asifiwe. Hasa yeye anaweza toa neno la kuponya hiyo familia. Lakini sio kutoa neno ambalo linaweza rarua familia. Bwana asifiwe. Tunde katika kitabu cha mwisho katika kitabu cha Yakobo James 1:11 moja moja. James 1:19 moja samahani Biblia inasema hivi Hayo mnajua basi kila uwe mwepesi wa kusikia bali si mwepesi wa kusema I think ni hapo tu. Bwana asifiwe. Kila mtu awe mwepesi wa, wa kusikia na wala si mwepesi wa kusema. Pengine ume, hata umekasirika umekasirishwa na mtoto, umekasirishwa na mtu ambaye unakaa naye, umekasirishwa na mtu yeyote. Maana kukasirika ni ni kama ni ni, ni kama naweza sema ni kitu ya kawaida kwa mtu. Kwa mtu wa kawaida ama binadamu. Ndio bila inasema kwa maana jua lisi Tuae ama lisishuke kabla kama bado ungali umebeba hiyo makasiriko ndani ya moyo wako. Lakini kukasirika ni necha. Bwana asifiwe. Wakati umekasirika labda ama umepitana na mtu. Maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya kinywa chako. Ni maneno ya aina gani? Maana wakati huo ambao Mungu ame, mtu amekasirika ndio unaweza ona true colors za huyo mtu. Bwana asifiwe. Siku moja nilikuwa kwa gari. <laughs> na kulikuwa kumenyesha, nilikuwa ninaenda kazini asubuhi. Na huyo na, nakumbuka mwanaume mmoja alikuwa amevalia vizuri amevalia suti na alikuwa I think na utu tubag kidogo tunakwanga na kama laptops. Kisha 
akaka yani kwa bahati mbaya ametengeza kiatu kama cha mchungaji hivi kisha mtu akapitia akamkanyaga kibahati mbaya bwana asifiwe na alikuwa mwanaume mwenzake do alikuwa mwanaume mkubwa wa umri kumliko na huyu huyu kij, alikuwa kijana tu si au kwa mzee vipi nilisikia mimi mwenyewe akiongea kwa simu bwana asifiwe venye mkutano ulikuwa lakini baada huyu mzee kumkanyaga mzee wa umri kama babake huyo kijana aliongelesha huyo mwanaume ile matusi yenye si ku expect anaweza toka kwa mtu mwenye alikuwa anasema bwana asifiwe na akiongea venye mikutano zilikuwa huko nje bwana asifiwe na hapo ndo nikajifundisha ya kwamba ukitaka kuona true colors za mtu <laughs> wakati amekasirika Atu ukinikanyaga ulikuwa umeangalia wapi? Unajua bei ya hiki yatu? <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. Lakini nilielewa kwa sababu alikuwa anatoka the other side of Kenya, the river side of Kenya. Bwana asifiwe. Alikuwa anatoka ujaluoni. <laughs> Halimwonyesha kwamba unajua, unajua bei ya hiki yatu. Huyu mzaka mwambia samahani kijana yangu, nimekosea hadi mzee karibu aina chini. Nilisikia ni kama machozi inaweza nitoka. Huyo mtu alikuwa anasema venye mikutano zilikuwa anaongea mambo ya kumtukuza Mungu, lakini wakati alikanyagwa kidogo, kupakwa tope tu. Ile ambaye hata ange, angechukua tu tishu na apanguze, apitishe na hiyo brush yake. Lakini yale maneno yaliyotoka ndani ya kinywa chake sio maneno ya ambayo yamekolea munyu. Ni maneno ambayo yanaweza mshusha mtu. Suppose kungekuwa na mtu pale ambaye alikuwa amesikia ile conversation yake kwa simu, angesema kama huu ndio okovu, mimi hata siwezi okoka. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa hivyo maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu wapendo. wakati umekasirika, wakati haujakasirika. Yawe ni maneno ambayo yanampendeza Mungu. Maneno ambayo yamekolea munyu. Maneno ambayo yanaweza mponya mtu aliye na hitaji. Maneno ambayo yanaweza mtia mtu nguvu. Maneno ambayo yanaweza mfanya mtu ambaye ameshushika ajue kwamba kumbe bado kuna tumaini. Bwana asifiwe. Maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu. Hata kwa makanisa mingi. Utakubaliana na mimi hii. Ya kwamba kuna watu wengi wamefanya watu wengine wametoka kanisani. Bwana asifiwe kwa sababu ya maneno ambayo wanatoa ndani ya vinywa vyao. Watu wamefanya watu wengine wameacha kazi ama wameachishwa kazi kwa sababu ya maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya vinywa vyao. Na pia maneno yanayotoka ndani ya vinywa vyetu imekuwa stumbling block ya watu wengine pia kuokoka. Tunawazuilia watu hawezi okoka. Kuna wazuilia watu hawezi enda hata kanisani. Anasema kwa ile kanisa enye masi anaenda siwezi enda afadhali nikae niombe kwa nyumba Bwana asifiwe tumekuwa vizuizi kwa maneno mengine pia ambayo tunatoa tumekuwa vizuizi ya watu kukuja katika ufalme wa Mungu Au unajua hiyo damu iko juu yako Bwana asifiwe Ninaoacha na hili chunga maneno ambayo yanatoka ndani ya kinywa chako Chunga neno ambalo unatoa ndani ya kinywa chako wakati ambao uko peke yako, wakati ambapo mchungaji hayupo, wakati ambapo hata hakuna mtu mwingine mahali pale ambaye anakujua. Kwa sababu uko peke yako na yule dada ambaye hakuna mtu anamjua sasa unaweza ongea vitu vile ambavyo unaongea. Mungu yuko pale. Hauko peke yako hapo. Bwana asifiwe. Maneno yako yamlete mtu kwa Kristo. Maneno yako yakapate kumtia mtu nguvu. Maneno yako yakapate kumfanya mtu apende sana hata wokovu. Afurahie wokovu. Pengine umemleta mtu katika Kristo, umemfanya mtu ameokoka. Lakini anafika pale anaona yale maneno ambayo unaongea. Anasema huyu dada ndiye aliyeniongoza katika hii kanisa na akafanya nikaokoa lakini ile vile anavyoongea. Heri nirudi mahali nilikuwa. Bwana asifiwe. Hiyo damu iko juu yako. Kwa hivyo tuchunge sana maneno yetu. Mungu awabariki. Amen. Acha nikaribishe waimbaji. Tunapoenda katika kipindi kingine. Karibuni sana.
Halleluja. Tusimame kwenye miguu zetu. Tunapoingia katika kipindi kingine cha kuabudu na sifa. Haleluya. Amen. Bwana Yesu Kristo asifiwe. Tunashukuru Mungu kwa hilo neno ambalo tumepokea asubuhi ya leo. Na ninaamini kwamba sisi sote tuko tayari kufungua mioyo yetu. Tusifanye mioyo yetu iwe migumu mbele za uso wake. Fanya moyo wako iwe nyepesi ili uweze ukapokea neno lake. Kumbuka Yesu Kristo aliwaambia wana wa Israeli ya kwamba mimi ndiyo taa na yote ambaye atakayenifuata njia zake zitakuwa zimemulikwa na maisha yake itamulikwa milele. Kwa hivyo inua mikono yako juu twende tumbeleza Mwenyezi Mungu tumshukuru haijalishi kama tuko na kinanda ama hatuna haijalishi kama tuko na mpiga keyboard cha mahana ni kwamba tuko mbele za Mwenyezi Mungu na uwepo wake uko mahali hapa baba Mungu tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya neno lako asubuhi ya leo tunakuomba ukachunge maneno ya vinywa vyetu maneno yote ambayo tunatoa vinywani mwetu baba wacha yawe maneno ambayo yanatoka kwako tuweze kwanza kutafakari maneno yetu yakawe maneno ya kuinua yeyote yule ambaye anahisi ni mnyonge yeyote yule anahisi ya kana kwamba hana nguvu aweze akainuliwa yote yule ambaye anatamani kukufuata wewe wacha maneno ya vinywa vyetu baba viweze zikawafanya baba wakakufuate wewe wakakujue wewe nenda tu mbeleza Mwenyezi Mungu fungua moyo wako mbele zake mwambie Bwana bila wewe mimi siwezi bila nguvu zako baba siwezi nikachunga maneno ya kinywa changu bila uwezo wako baba juu ya maisha yangu mimi siwezi 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 mwambie Bwana kwamba hauwezi chochote bila yeye Hauwezi chochote bila yeye unahitaji neema yake unahitaji nguvu zake aweze akakusaidia mwambie bwana hauwezi lolote hauwezi lolote hauwezi lolote mwambie kwamba una taa zangu lakini nyinyi wana wa Israeli mnajua tu matendo yangu peke yake usijue matendo ya Mungu peke yake jua pia njia zake maana kujua njia zake pia ni kupokea ufunuo kujua njia zake pia ni kukombolewa kupata nguvu kuinuliwa kuwishwa tena kupewa nguvu katika mifupa yetu maana yeye ndio nguvu ya mifupa yetu sante Mungu Petero akamuliza Yesu tuende wapi na wewe ndio umebeba neno la uzima wa milele mwambie Bwana kwamba huna mali pengine pa kuenda Huna mwingine ambao unaweza kumtegemea ila ni yeye tu. Ni yeye tu, ni yeye tu. Ni yeye tu muinulie mikono yako juu mwambie ni wewe tu unastahili. Muinulie mikono yako usimuinulie mwanadamu mikono. Usinue mikono sababu Kristo bela amesema inua mikono. Inua mikono yako mbeleza Mwenyezi Mungu. Ukiamini ya kwamba bila yeye hauwezi ukiamini ya kwamba na kujua kwamba ni yeye tu ndiye anastahili kuabudiwa unastahili kuabudiwa unastahili ewe Yesu unastahili kuabudiwa unastahili e unastahili unastahili Inua mikono yako juu mwambie Bwana kwamba unastahili kuabudiwa asubuhi ya leo Yesu unastahili baba unastahili unastahili masia unastahili sema unastahili unastahili
Unastahili kuabudiwa Bwana. Unastahili. Wewe muweza wa yote. Unastahili kuwa. Unastahili baba. Unastahili yeye. Yesu wewe. Unastahili kuwa. Unastahili baba. wasema kutoka moyoni mwako lakini ya kwamba Yesu ni wewe tu wa kuabudiwa hakuna mwingine anaweza kuabudiwa kama sio wewe hakuna mwingine ambaye tunaweza kumtazamia kama sio wewe wewe ambao uliumba bingu na nchi wewe ambao uliumba samaki majini wewe ambao uliumba baba ndege hewani Ukapuliza baba pumzi yako ndani mwetu bila hiyo pumzi baba hatuna uwezo wa kuishi tena bila hiyo pumzi baba hatuna uhai bila hiyo pumzi baba hatuna nguvu tena bila hiyo pumzi baba sisi ni bure ndio maana siku hii ya leo tunataka tukai weponi mwako weponi mwako baba tukikaa weponi mwako tunapokea nguvu mpya tukikaa uweponi mwako tunapokea maisha maisha ya uzima wa milele maana nje uwepo wako baba kuna mauti nje uwepo wako baba kuna njaa kuna kifo kuna magonjwa nje uwepo wako lakini ndani ya uwepo wako baba kuna uzima wa milele ndani ya uwepo wako baba kuna maisha tele ndani ya uwepo wako baba kuna nguvu mpya ndani ya uwepo wako baba kuna kuinuliwa tena kuna kubarikiwa baba kuna kurejeshewa yale yote ambazo tumepoteza baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunakuja mbele zako tukisema kwamba ni wewe tu unastahili kuabudiwa unastahili kuabudiwa baba unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili ewe Yesu Unastahili kuabudiwa Unastahili e unastahili Unastahili kuabudiwa Yesu
Unastahili kuwa Unastahili baba Unastahili Unastahili Yesu Unastahili kuwa Unastahili wawe Unasema Unastahili Unastahili Sinuwa mikono yako juma Bia buwana unastahili
thing that you do in our lives oh, is excellent oh Lord. my father ndio maana neno lako linasema kwamba kila mahali baba ulienda ulitenda mema asubuhi ya leo tunasema ya kwamba you are an excellent god you are a marvelous god you are a precious god none is like you my father we have no any other god to compare unto you my father that is why we declare and decree that you are an excellent god you are an excellent father this wonderful morning as the lord is excellent into your life tell him to do something new into you tell him to do something new in your life Jina la kondi lo jina bwana Jina la kondi lo jina bwana Jina la kondi lo jina Jina la kondi lo jina Jina la kondi Jina Bwana Jina la Jina ambalo linauisha tena Jina la kondi lo jina Bwana Jina la kondi lo jina Kwa hilo jina viwete wanatembea tena Kwa hilo jina baba vipofu wanaona tena Kwa hilo jina baba wenye ambao wana nguvu wanapata tena Hakuna jina kama lako baba Hakuna jina kama hilo lako Sema jina lako Fakari ninapata amani tena Eh Yesu Watch 
Acha asubuhi ya leo acha jina la Mwenyezi Mungu likupatie nguvu tena. Likupatie matumaini tena katika maisha yako. Likupanguze machozi wewe ambao umemwaga machozi hata kwa siri. Jina la Yesu. Jina la Yesu. Jina ambalo ni ngome imara. Your name is the righteous tower. Hey. Your name is a strong tower. And when the righteous run to it, they are saved. We run unto your name, oh God, this wonderful morning. May you save your people. May you save your people, oh God, with your wonderful name. May your wonderful Lord God give a new name to your children. Jehovah. Oh yes.
Jemu jenge ndani yangu Mukae na mimi Mutembe na mimi Nikule na nikunywe na wewe baba Maana nikika na wewe baba Sitaweza kuondoka inje ya hema yako Maana inje kuna mauti baba Ndani ya hema yako kuna uzima milele Ndani ya hema yako Kuna maisha ya amani Tamani ya subu ya leo Yesu Kristu waka jenge makao Ndani ya maisha yako Akakae na wewe milele daima Vile ambava metuwa hili ya kwamba Nitakuwa nani hadi mwisho wa dahari Utembe na yeye hadi mwisho wa dahari E hey Yesu Ni matamani ya moyo wetu wa subu ya leo Ya kwamba ukae na sisi Tushukulikie buwana Tusaidie baba Bila msaada wako watutaweza Pungua macho zetu mbaba Maana sisi kama wanadamu tunafikiria kuamba tunaona But we have scales in our eyes Remove every scale the way you remove scales from the eyes of Paul And he was able to see you He was able to understand your mysteries He was able to understand your ways and he received your grace. Wacha tukapoke neema yako. When you remove scales from our eyes, let us receive your grace. Grace that sanctifies us. Grace that multiplies us. Grace that will give us divine speed. Grace that will lift us up. Grace that will sanctify and purify our lives. Because you have removed scales from our eyes. We think that we have put on good garments but father god may you dress us with our with your garments oh god that are full of glory that are full of glory full of wisdom oh god and when we receive your wisdom oh god we will understand your revelation thank you my father we worship you we magnify you we lift your name high. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. King of glory. You are wonderful, Ebenezer. 
You are wonderful and there is none like you, Jesus. None to be compared unto thee, O Lord. You are wonderful, mighty King of glory. You are wonderful, Jehovah Nisi. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Messiah. You are the Lord of Lords, Abba Father. You are the King of glory, Ebenezer. You are I am that I am. You are the last and the first, Abba Father. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Ebenezer. There is none like you, Jesus. Father, you are wonderful. You are wonderful, Lord. You are wonderful, Abba Father. You are wonderful, Abba Father. So wonderful unto this place, Jehovah Nisi. And for the fun we have reached, King of Glory. Surely you are Rebeneza. You are Rebeneza, Messiah. You are Rebeneza in this place, Abba Father. You are Rebeneza in this place, mighty King of Glory. And there is none like you, Jehovah. Receive all the praises this morning, Abba Father. Receive all the honor, Abba Father. Receive all the adoration, so God. For you are Yahweh, Jehovah. You are Yahweh, Messiah. Receive all the glory, Father. Receive all the glory. Honor and adoration, so God. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Jesus. None like you, Father. And to be compared to the Lord. You are so wonderful. You are so wonderful. The Bible says that your name is a strong tower by far. That when the righteous run unto it, King of glory, they are saved. This morning we have run unto you, Jehovah. You are the hope of glory. We have run unto you, Jehovah. Nisi. We have run unto you, Lord. Oh, for there is none like you, Lord. That you may cover us with the blood. And you may go before us, O Lord. And you may walk with us, Jehovah. We have run unto you, King of glory. We have run unto you, the hope of glory. We have run unto you, King of glory. We have run unto you, Messiah. We have run unto you, I am that I am. And our Father, we may see the salvation of our Father. That we may see the salvation today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty Redeemer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. None like you. You are the Lord that healeth. No weapon fashioned against them that are called by your name, Abba Father, shall prosper. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. To pigi abu ana makofi. Shangu na vigele gele mana yeye ni mwaminifu. Asante mfama fama. Asante Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bwana ni mwema. Yeye ni wa ajabu. He so wonderful. Salimia aliye karibu na wewe. Mwambie ni wakati wa kumchezea Bwana. Ni wakati wa kumsifu. Tunamchezea ni kana kwamba hatutacheza tena kesho. Tumia nguvu uliyo nayo leo. Usijali kesho utatoa pi nguvu nyingine ya kumchezea tena. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Bwana tunakutamani. Tunakutamani Yesu. Tunakutamani mfalme mfalme. Piga makofi yako ya juu shangwe na vigelengele kwa Yesu. Hallelujah! 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 Hey. Piga makofi, piga shangwe, piga vigelengele kwa Yesu. Chezia Yesu tu
mwokozie yeye ni mwema oh ananipenda mwokozie yeye ni mwema ananipenda mwokozie yeye ni mwema eli ananipenda mwokozie yeye ni mwema ananipenda mwokozie yeye ni mwema oh ni lala poni ya mukapo ananipenda yesu ye Pokea sifa, 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 p
Tunakupa sifa mfame Tunakupa sifa yesu Tunasema pokia sifa zetu zote Pokia sifa zote dadi Pokia sifa mfame mungu mwenye enzi Heshima zote ni zako na hata mamlaka yote ni yako yesu Pokia sifa mfame Pokia sifa Baba ni nakupa sifa Yesu ni nakupa sifa Mesia ni nakupa sifa za moyo wangu Kwa umbali huu nimefika ninakupa sifa dadi Mahali hapa tumefika kama jamii hii Yesu tunakupa sifa zetu Ana wewe ni mwaminifu Ewe ni mwaminifu mfano Baba tunakupa sifa Umekuwa upande wetu Bwana na hakuna yoyozangeza yoyozangeza kusimama kinyume na maisha yetu Bwana tunakupa sifa kwa sababu ya hiyo. Umetushika mkono Bwana mama Bwana. Umenenda pamoja na nasi Simba wa Yuda. Umekuwa upande wetu mfamo mfame. Manii walipo tuinukia mfamo wa mani. Bwana ulitengeza mlango wetu kutokea. Tunakupa sifa kwa sababu ya hiyo. Wewe ni Bwana wa vita mfame. Umetupigania Jehova. Umepigana vita vyetu Bwana mama Bwana. Yesu tunakupa sifa. Tunakupa sifa mfame Asante mungu wa neema Hallelujah Hallelujah Wewe wajabu Yes Lord Wajabu Wewe wajabu Mfame Wa wafame Mwenye katika kiti chako cha enzi tunaliadhimisha baba jina lako asubuhi ya leo tukisema ya kwamba wewe ndi unastahili unabaki kuwa Mungu jana leo na hata milele hutawai kubadilika tunakabidhi baba yule ambaye anaenda kunena neno lako asubuhi ya leo ukamfinyange tena umfanye awe tope tachamana tope nyepesi baba ili aweze akaleta utukufu wako na ni katika jina la mwanao Yesu Kristu tumeabudu na kusifu na kila mmoja aseme amen pigia Yesu makofi unapopata nafasi yako ya kuketi amen haleluya Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. 
Salimia mtu jamani. Salimia mtu kuna watu wameingia tukisifu hawajasalimiwa. Huwa ninakuambia ni vizuri kusalimia mtu maana haujui nililala namna gani. Si kweli? Labda wewe ulikunywa chai hata asubuhi wengine wameamkia kwa lugha ya kwetu tunaita obworo. Umekula asubuhi kabisa tumbo imejaa, si ndio? Alafu ukikuja hapa jirani yako hajaonja kitu. Wewe unaona tu wako sawa naimba nasema pokea sifa. Sasa wewe unasema tu pokea sifa Mungu kwa sababu umenipatia obworo asubuhi, nimepata kukula nimekunywa kumbe kuna mtu ambaye anasema tu pokea sifa na tumbo lake liko kavu hata ajui mchana atapata chakula wapi praise the lord lakini mshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu ya kwamba tunapowapatia wenzetu tumaini la maisha pia wao wanapata kuishi haleluya sijui kama kila mtu amepata nafasi ya kukaa naongea ongea ndipo sasa tupate nafasi ya kuketi very soon nyumba yetu inapanuka kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Praise the Lord. Kwa wale wanaingianga hapa asubuhi, sometimes unaweza fikiria ni mimi na Masi tutamaliza ibada. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Unaingia unafikiria ni Pastor Mary na Masi ndio leo wataanza ibada na wamalize. Lakini kazi ya Mungu ni ya ajabu. Haleluya. Kazi ya Mungu haina kosa, haina dosari. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Kwa hivyo tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa siku hii ya leo. Ametupatia uzima, ametupatia uhai. Tuko katika nyumba yake ili tukaweze kumsifu na kumuabudu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na pia tukaweze kusikia kwamba na yeye pia analo nini katika maisha yetu. Hili ni funzo la maombi. Ya kwamba unapoomba sio kila wakati wewe kulia tu baba nipatie baba niokoe baba ninue there is a time you also sit down and listen from the lord praise the lord so it is our time to listen from the lord ya kwamba bwana tumekupatia sifa baba tumekusifu baba tumekuinua na je wewe una nini kwa ajili yetu mchana wa leo praise the lord bwana analo jambo kwa ajili yako na kwa ajili yangu bwana apewe sifa Nataka kusikia emeni ya nguvu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana analo neno kwa ajili yetu. Amen. Na leo Bwana Mungu ni wa upendo kabisa ameweza kututumia watumishi wake ili wakatulishe neno siku hii ya leo. Maana unajua wakati mmoja unapokula chakula cha mama unafikiria ni mama peke yake ndio mpishi. Kumbe kuna mama mwingine pia anapika kuliko mama yako. Si ni ukweli? So leo tuko tayari pia kukula chakula kutoka kwa mama mwingine na tunajua ya kwamba tutaweza kubarikiwa. Ama sisi tunajuanga wa baba kama ni wapishi kweli ama wa mama tu ndio wapishi. Hata wa baba ni wapishi. Si ni ukweli? Kwa hivyo leo tuko tayari kukula chakula kutoka kwa machefu. Wala ambao wametumwa na Mungu kwetu ili wakatupatie neno la Mungu. Na naamini ya kwamba wangapi wamekuwa kibarikiwa on Wednesday? Umekuwa mkiwatch on Wednesdays. Wengi tumekuwa tukikomment. So leo Mungu amesema ya kwamba sio Wednesday peke yake. Wacha pia tulishwe Sunday na watumishi wa Mungu ambao hujinyima nafasi yao kwa sababu ya Wednesday. Wanakuja hapa kutupatia neno la Mungu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe wanakuja hapa kutupatia neno la Mungu kila Wednesday hawajawahi kosa wakati mwingine wanakaa tu hata stima zikikata wanakaa tu mpaka masaa yao ikifika ya kuondoka wanaondoka network ikikata wanakaa tu mpaka masaa yao ikifika ya kuondoka wanaondoka lakini wanahakikisha ya kwamba kila Wednesday wako hapa kwa ajili ya kazi ya Mungu ningependa ya kwamba tumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu twende tu mbele za Mungu kwamba baba leo neno la leo kama tumeketi hivyo neno la leo wacha lipate nafasi maana Mungu anasasawanisha neno lake kama mbegu ingine inaanguka kwa mchanga ingine inaanguka kwa barabara ingine inaanguka kwenye miba nyingine inaanguka kwa mawe na nyingine inaanguka kwenye udongo na sio udongo tu maana tuko pia na udongo ambao hauna rotuba 
inaanguka kwenye udongo ulio na rotuba na inamea mwambie Mungu si neno lako lianguke katika maisha yangu na maisha haya baba masikio yangu moyo wangu uwe kama udongo ulio na rotuba ikapokee hili neno kwa baraka baba na likazae matunda ndani yangu siku moja nitakapo tena kuwa nakutana na mtumishi nitoe ushuhuda niseme mtumishi lile neno ambalo ulinena ndani mwangu lilifungua biashara yangu lile neno ambalo ulinena ndani mwangu lilinizalishia tumbo ambalo lilikuwa halina mtoto lile neno ambalo ulinena siku ile hata kama mtumishi wa Mungu hata kuwa ananikumbuka Mungu atakuwa anakumbuka na atampatia ukumbusho ya kwamba siku moja nilikutuma madhare ukanena baba wacha neno la leo lianguke katika tumbo langu baba na tumbo langu likawe kama roti wacha neno la leo lianguke kwa mikono yangu na mikono yangu iwe kama udongo ulio na rotuba lisiondoke bila kutimiza makusudi ya Mungu ambalo baba umelituma likafanye mtakatifu kama neno lako litakuwa la baraka lisiondoke bila kunibariki kama neno lako ni la uponyaji lisiondoke baba likiniacha nikiugua nafsini mwangu neno hilo kama ni la watoto wangu baba likawabariki watoto wangu neno lako ukanena Jumapili iliyopita kwamba halitawahi kukurudia baba bure linahakikisha linatimiza makusudi yako ulilolituma baba kufanya chini ya jua na minajua kwamba neno hili halitakurudia bali litasalia ndani mwangu nawe utakuwa ukiwa juu utatazama vile neno lako linameesha mti huu unakao zama matunda mengi katika maisha yangu na katika maisha ya watoto wangu katika Maisha ya vizazi vyangu katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Asante mtakatifu. Maana mtumishi wako siku moja atakuja kuona yale ambayo hakika amekuja kufanya mahali hapa yakitimia katika maisha yetu. Winuliwe Bwana na ukapate kuabudiwa. Na ni kwa Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kuamini. Sema amen. Hivyo umejitayarisha kulipokea hili neno isije likakupita hata nukta. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Maana najua mtumishi wa Mungu ni mtumishi aliyeitwa na Mungu ili afanye kazi ya Mungu. Na madhabahu yetu yako wazi. Karibu mtumishi wa Mungu kwa ajili yako ili ukafanye kazi ya Mungu kwa siku hii ya leo ambao Mungu amekutuma mahali hapa na Mungu aweze kubariki. So tumaihona tumpigie mtumishi wa Mungu makofi ili akatuletee neno la Bwana asubuhi ya leo kwa utukufu wa jina la Yesu amen Bwana asifiwe Haleluya I want to take this opportunity to appreciate the almighty God Nachukua fursa hii kumshukuru Bwana mkuu The one who has made this day to be the way it is Yule amefanya siku hii ikawa jinsi ilivyo The one who is highly exalted zaidi my name is Harrison Adea majina yangu ni Harrison Adea we are from Kayole tumetoka katika mji wa Kayole Pentecostal Christian Universal Church Pentecostal Christian Universal Church and assistant bishop uh, Crispus Sirengo chini ya askofu msaidisi Crispus Sirengo we didn't know we shall be here today hatukuweza kujua kuwa tutakuwa hapa leo but after going through the class session baada ya kupitia madarasa jana we had an invitation tukapata mwaliko and then i was so uh, hesitant to say yes uh, si kwa mwepesi kuitikia ule mwaliko and uh, i said i've not informed my senior pastor nikaweza ku ambia ule mwaliko kwamba sijaweza mjulisha uh, mchungaji wangu mkuu it will be inappropriate for me to say yes uh, itakuwa bora kwangu kusema ndiyo. so i took an opportunity to inform him kwa hivyo nikachukua fursa ya kumjulisha so that i may have the blessing and also the acceptance from him ili nikaweze pata baraka na pia kibali toka kwake that is when i communicated back to pastor uh, na ndio sababu nikaweza kuwasiliana tena na mchungaji and i told her then i will come 
nikamweleza kuwa basi nitakuja i was not that sure at what time uh, you normally begin your services sikuwa na uhakika wakati upi mnaanza ibada zenu because to me sunday i woke up very early in the morning at 4 maana nami upande wangu jumapili asubuhi saa kumi asubuhi kabisa na kwanga nimeamka i do my devotions nafanya maombezi yangu and i start preparation of the service na ninaanza maandalizi ya ibada i have so many responsibilities in church that i promised my heart that i have to do it majukumu mengi sana kanisani ndio aidi moyo wangu kwamba niyafanye so i do uh, the responsibility until Uh, 7:40 yale majukumu nayafanya hadi masaa ya asubuhi ya saa moja. then i go to the house to prepare na kisha nitaingia kwenye nyumba kufanya maandalizi then at 8:30 i need to be there because i want to believe i normally teach the teens uh, sambili asubuhi ndakuwa pale kanisani maana wanafunza wale vijana wenye umri mdogo we have some classes that i do take them through pana madarasa ambayo mimi huwapeleka the two classes madarasa mawili then from there i attend the last service na kisha baada ya pale na kwenda kudhuria ibada after the service i have also the responsibilities to do na baada ya ibada pia majukumu mengine yako pale na yafanya so that is to tell you hiyo ni kukwambia when you have committed yourself to christ wakati umejitolea mwenyewe katika Kristo Yesu you, you don't just come to church and sit and be a member and go uji tu kanisani uketi uwe mshirika na uondoke there is a lot about it pana mengi zaidi hapo don't just come and sit and go usije kuketi na kwenda you can ask yourself a question where has god called me to serve waweza jiuliza maswali ni eneo lipi bwana ameniita kutumia what can i do to better up this ministry basi ni lipi naweza lifanya kuboresha huduma huu what can i do so that i can touch the life of someone lipi naweza fanya guza maisha ya mtu the whole week we have seven days Ajuma mzima pana siku saba. What are you thinking about the house of God? Jeni lipi unaliwazia kuhusu nyumba ya Bwana? What is this burden that is inside you that when you sit somewhere you are thinking I need to be doing this? Ni mzigo upi uliyo ndani yako unapoketi chini unasema unapaswa kulifanya. And that is the reason why. Na ndo sababu when I got saved I had done so many things of the world. Nalifanya mengi sana dunia. I did so many things. Nalifanya mengi sana. I have bad history. Niko na historia mbofu kabisa. And I have good history today. Na pia niko na historia nzuri leo. Not because I've made it. Si kwa sababu nimeifanya. It is God who has made it. Ni Mungu ameifanya. We did a lot. Tulifanya mengi. And the people who knows me na watu wanaonifahamu they believed i cannot be born again waliamini siwezi yokoka tena and that is why na ndio sababu whenever i do what i want to do right now wakati wote nafanya kila ambacho nataka kufanya sasa hivi i feel the grace of god and much love na hisi neema ya Mungu na upendo mkuu if it were not god kama ha lingekuwa ama hainge kuwa ni Mungu I would have not been where I am basi singelikuwa hapa nilipo leo that is why when i sit anywhere where there is service na ndio sababu napoketi popote palipo na ibada i meditate on so many things na tafakari mambo ya leo mengi i teach theology nafunsa biblia and that is why i make so many lessons na ndio sababu natengeneza masomo ya leo mengi today i want to teach i don't want to preach leo nataka kufundisha sitahubiri it is a privilege ni tunuku pia for you to sit and just listen wewe kuketi na kusikiza and i want to bless the lord for my sisters who have been singing na nataka kumbariki bwana kwa sababu ya dada zangu ambao wamekuwa wanatuimbia the songs normally make me uh, refreshed zile nyimbo wakati mwingi zinanituma kufanywa upya and they remind me of so many things na zinanikumbusha mambo ya leo mengi i i normally watch your services 
every Sundays. After all I've done, I normally sit down and listen to the songs and listen to the sermons. Because there is that divine connection between us. The Lord will remember you. That is my message. The Lord will remember you. And that is what I want to speak. I want somebody to read for me. I can see the microphone there. You, you just be a good reader. Can, can you help me? Uh, Genesis chapter number 8 and verse 15. Mwanzo, mlango wa nane, mstari wa kuminatano, mtu naweza tusaidia. Genesis chapter number 8 and verse 15. Mwanzo, mlango wa nane, mstari wa kuminatano. I want to speak, God will remember you. Nataka kusungumza kuhusu, buwana mungu watakukumbuka. Genesis chapter number 8 verse 15. Yeah. Then God said to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Can you continue? Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. Mm -hmm. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his son's wife. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the land, came out of the ark one kind after another. Mm -hmm. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasant aroma and said in his heart, never again will I cast the ground because of humans. Even now, though... Now, now I want you to read chapter number 8 and then verse 1 to 3. Naomba usome mlangu ule wanane but God remembered Noah and all the anim wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. Have you seen that? Continue. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. Mm -hmm. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens had been closed. Thank and the you. Thank you. Thank Asante. You. Father, we thank you for this word. As we share with your people, pray that the spirit of God will establish it in our hearts. Have your way through this word. Speak to us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. During the days of Noah, Siku zile za nua, there was a lot of wicked things that were happening on the face of the world. Palikuwa na mambo mengi maofu ya liokuwa na fanyika duniani. And there was a lot of things that the Lord saw happening. Na pakawa na mambo mengi alio yaona bwana ya kifanyika. No one was there to do the will of God. Basi hapa kuwa na mtu pale ale kuwa tayari kuyafanya mapenzi ya mungu. But no one found grace in the eyes of God. Na enu wakapata ne ema. And the Lord God of Israel gave him the responsibility of building the ark. So that Noah can build the ark and God will save his people. But at the same time Noah was given the message of righteousness that was to be preached all over the earth. Na kwa wakati huo Noah kapewa ujumbe wa uhaki ambao ulipaswa kuhubiriwa duniani kote. Now I'm building the foundation. Na jenga msingi sasa. When Noah took the initiative of proclaiming the message of righteousness. Noah alipochukua hatua ya kutangaza ujumbe ama injili ya uhaki. No one 
ever wanted to hearken to his message. Hapana mtu alitaka kusikiza ujumbe wake. Because people were so rooted in evil doing. Maana watu walikuwa wamezama mno katika matendo maofu. And so they told Noah. Na hivyo waka Whatever you are saying has never happened on the face of the world. Because at the creation and after the creation the generation of men had never seen the downfall of rain. Kisasi cha wanadamu hakija wai shuhudia and so it was a mystery to these people when Noah can come majestically and tell them there will be rain. Ikawa ni siri sana kwao Noah alipokuja na kuambia panaenda kuwepo na mvua. And now he's telling them that the Lord God of Israel has commanded me to prepare the ark so that he can save the people. Na Noah akaja kuambia kwamba Bwana ameniamuru nitengeze safina ili ikaweze kuokoa watu. No one paid attention. Hapana mtu alisikiza haya. No one even hearkened to what he was preaching. Hapana mtu alisikiza alichokuwa anahubiri. Bible says everybody did a continuation of evil as he wanted. So Noah took all the years to build the ark. And finally the D-Day came. And now the Lord told Noah to enter into the ark with the animals and everything that he had commanded him to, uh, to take it in. Now when Noah entered there it was the Lord himself who closed the door of the ark. Ni Mungu mwenyewe wa mbinguni ndiye alifunga ule mlango wa safina. And there came rain. Na basi mvua ikaanza. Now people started remembering what this man was to was talking about. Basi watu hawa wakaanza kuwa na kumbukumbu ya maneno aliyokuwa anazungumza mtu. You know uh, according to the human being. Wajua kulingana na wanadamu. They will only remember what God has said when they are in trouble. Watakumbuka tu yale Mungu ameyasema wakiwa they will only remember what God was saying when they are passing through a situation. That is why when God wants to get your attention, he brings a situation in your life so that you can now remember his voice. So many, so many people are occupied with the worldly thing in a, in a manner that they cannot pay attention to the voice of God. God who spoken in the days of Moses he is still speaking today but who is listening to his voice because our voices are, our ears are open to other voices than the voice of God but when God wants his people to hear and to understand his voice. He can command a storm in your marriage. He can command a storm in the life of your children. He can command a storm at the place of your work. To an extent when you sit down you will say it is now God who is speaking. That is not the devil. Don't try to cast the devil there. Even if these people try to cast away the waters, it will not go. It was the finger of God doing it. The hand of God in the work. And there is nothing you can do. But it's to say Lord I repent Because I did hear your voice While you were speaking But I have seen your judgment now The Lord closed the door Of the ark 
and Noah together with his household eight people they managed to enter inside and Jehovah closed the door 40 days and 40 nights Elohim never spoken a word Elohim Elohim never said anything to Noah. Elohim hakusema lolote kwa nu. Elohim never came and said anything as a word of encouragement to him. Elohim Mungu hakushungumza lolote kama neno la kutia moyo kwao. According to human tendency, kulingana na mtasamo wa wanadamu, you would have said, angesema, why is God not saying something? Kwa nini Mungu amebaki katika kimya? There is a time of silence in your life. The student of the Bible, they believe this, that from the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew, there was a long silence. Cha Matthew kulikuwa na kimya kingi for so many years kwa miaka silizo nyingi but again god began speaking na pia tena mungu akaanza kusungumza there is a time when god will speak there is a time when he will remain silent pana wakati mungu atasungumza kuna wakati mungu atanyamaza the silence of god does not mean he does not see what you are doing kimya cha mungu hakimaanishi aoni kile unachokifanya the silence of god does not mean he has decided you. But silence is one way of communication. Elohim remained silent. He never uttered the word. During that particular time, you may wonder and ask this question. Or have you ever felt that God has abandoned you in the silence? God never abandons his people. You may be feeling you have been forgotten. But God has not forgotten his people. Noah may have felt like that after being on the ark for a while. The whole world had been destroyed by the flood. The rain had beat down in the torrent upon the lonely ark. Noah probably expected to hear from God about that condition. You go through a situation and you are wondering why is God not speaking something about my condition? And you have fasted and prayed but God is not still speaking. Does it mean he's not listening? But if God spoke to Noah, the Bible doesn't report it. When God finally speaks to Noah again, Basi Mungu anaporejea tena kusungumza kwa Noah. He is now telling him come out of the ark. Basi sasa anamwamuru Noah toka ndani ya safina. In Genesis chapter number 8 and verse 1. Katika mwanzo mlango wa 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 8 msari ule wa kwanza. What do you think Noah was thinking inside there? Je, unafikiria Noah alikuwa na mawazo yapi mle ndani? All that time when God was not telling him anything. Kwa huo wakati wote ambako Mungu alikuwa hasungumzi naye. At that time he felt probably he has been forgotten by God. But God remembered Noah. Not only Noah. And all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him. 
na vyote vilivyokuwa ndani ya safina pamoja naye in the ark katika safina not just know but also the animals asio tu noa pia wale wanyama walokuwa nao ndani and while the lord remembered noah naye mungu alipomkumbuka noa we see noah waiting patiently tunaona noa katika uvumilivu na ngoja and obediently katika ule utifu in the ark until god tells him to go out katika safina hadi mungu alipomwamuru nenda nje when noah was waiting upon the lord to speak noah alipokuwa na ngoja bwana ashungumze he waited upon the lord patiently alimngoja bwana katika subira some people think gaining patience you go and fast and then you receive patience watu wengine hufikiria kuwa na subira unaenda kufanya nya mafungo ili upate subira patience does not come as a result of prayer basi ule uvumilivu haiji kwa sababu ya maombi in greek we call it microthumia katika kigiriki inaitwa microthumia it is something that you develop as you go through a hard situation in life ni jambo ambalo linakuwa ndani yako katika mapito magumu na yapitia during that time noah did not know What will be the end of the flood? Katika wakati huo Noah hakuwa na ufahamu kwamba mwisho wa haya maji itakuwa ni lini. But he developed or waited patiently and obedient upon the Lord. Naye akakusa hiyo ndani yake na kusubiri akingojea Bwana. The word obedient means to do exactly what the instruction has said. Neno subira yamaanisha kufanya hasa kila ambacho maagizo imekupasa wewe kufanya After all this Noah decided to sacrifice for the Lord Baada ya haya Noah akaamua kujitolea kwa ajili ya Bwana And he did exactly what was pleasing to God Na akafanya hasa yaliyokuwa yanampendeza Mungu What does it mean when I say God remembered Noah Basi ni nini yamaanisha naposema Mungu akamkumbuka Noah It does not imply that that someone he uh, has been so busy and forgotten his responsibilities basi haionyeshi kwamba mtu amekuwa katika biashara mno hadi kiwango cha kusahau majukumu yake or god was sleeping ama mungu alikuwa katika usingizi no hapana the word god remembered noah neno mungu kumkumbuka noah it is a word that talks about taking an action to do something basi ni neno linalokuja na na, na maana ya kuchukua hatua ya kulifanya kitu in the bible the word is used often of god in the sense of god taking an action basi katika biblia neno hilo limetumika kwa kujirudia remember you mungu atakukumbuka don't think that god has forgotten what you are going through usije kuwa nafikira kwamba mungu amesahau yale ambayo unapitia and don't think that god has forgotten everything about your life na usije fikiria mungu amesahau kila kitu kuhusu maisha yako when god was about to destroy the city of sodom and gomor mungu alipokuwa karibu tu kuharibu mji wa wa, wa gomora he remembered one thing and said Alikumbuka neno moja akasema How can I destroy this city without informing Abraham Basi nitaharibu vipi ah maeneo haya mji huu bila kumjulisha Abraham How can I destroy this city without informing my friend Abraham Basi nitaharibu haje mji bila kumjulisha rafiki Abraham So God remembered Abraham Basi naye Mungu akamkumbuka Abraham and said I cannot do anything without informing him Na akasema siwezi fanya lolote bila kumfahamisha So the Lord Jehovah Kwa hivyo Bwana Jehovah He sent an angel to the house of Abraham Akatuma malaika kwa nyumba ya Abraham to go and tell Abraham the conversation and what his plans are na akaende kumwambia Abrahamu kuhusu mawasiliano na mipango alizonazo Mungu. And told Abraham I am going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Na akamwambia Abrahamu nakwenda kuharibu Sodoma na Gomorrah. The Lord remembered Abraham. Basi Bwana akamkumbuka Abrahamu. That is why he went to give him that secret information. Na ndio sababu akaenda kupeana siri ya habari hiyo. And now na sasa Abraham is having conversation here. Basi 
Abrahamu yuko katika mawasiliano hapa. What if you find inside Sodom and Gomorrah the righteous men will you still destroy it? Basi Abrahamu anamuuliza Mungu, na je, ukienda Sodoma na Gomorrah na upate mwenye haki mmoja, je, bado utamharibu pia yeye? Listen to this. Sikiza hii. The reason why corona has not destroyed Africa as the white men thought about it. A sababu ambayo Corona haijaweza kuangamisha wengi Afrika vile wazungu walifikiria. I know you don't do so many research and you don't want to know and you care less. Najua <laughs> haufanyi utafiti mwingi na hutaki kujua na hata ujali. America and all other people said their scientists said this corona will wipe Africa all of Africa and no one is going to remain in Africa. Amerika pamoja na maeneo mengine ya kule Amerikani waliweza kusema kwamba <laughs> magoncho haya yataweza kuangamisha Afrika nzima. Do you know what their basis was upon? Je, unajua misingi zao zilikuwa wapi? We don't have good facilities. Hatuna bidhaa za kutosha. <laughs> If the facilities can save men, kama bidhaa tulizonazo kama taifa zinaweza kuokoa wanadamu. Then damu. God is a liar. Basi Mungu ni muongo. Our God is greater than facilities. Mungu wetu ni zaidi ya bidhaa. And God remembered Africa. Na Mungu akakumbuka Afrika. Abraham. Abraham. Ask Jehovah. Akamuuliza Jehovah. When you get the righteous men in the city. Ukipa hata mtu mwenye haki katika mji will you still destroy it je bado utaharibu mji hey! ha! listen to this it was the prayer of the righteous men basi ilikuwa ni maombi ya wenye haki in africa katika afrika that made africa to stand iliyofanya afrika kusimama the prayer of a righteous man maombi ya mwenye haki a violent march yanapatikana when he prays fervently anapoomba kwa ukamilifu Abraham Abraham he's now having a conversation with God himself anapata sasa mawasiliano na Mungu mwenyewe and he's telling God anamwambia Mungu will you destroy je utaharibu when you discover that we have righteous men utakapotambua kwamba kuna wenye haki it is the righteousness of God that withhold the world and the nation from destruction ni uhaki wa Mungu ndio imeshikilia na kuzuia dunia katika uharibifu it was not kenyata facility haikuwa ni vitu alizonazo kenyata kenyata facilities haikuwa Ke Kenyatta National Hospital. Haikuwa ni bidhaa ama vitu zilizoko katika hospitali ya Kenya. It was not the ICU facilities. Sio chumba cha wagonjwa maututi. The righteousness of God. Basi ni haki ya Mungu. The righteousness of God. Ni haki ya in men and God said when i realize there is righteous people in the land i will not destroy na mungu akasema nitakapopata kuna wenye haki katika inchi sitaiangamiza and he went everywhere akaenda kote kote looking for the righteous men akitafuta wenye haki he never saw hatukuweza kuona 40 and the numbers are trickled Now listen to this. Sasa As he went on counting, alipoendelea kuhesabu, there was a man called Lot. Pakawa na mtu anaitwa Lot. The name Lot in Hebrew means a veil. Basi neno Lot katika Hebrew inamaanisha ile ile kitambaa kinachokuzuia. A veil kifuniko. Kinachokufunika, And now it hinders you to see. Inakuzuia kuona. Now when he came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Alipokuja kuangamisha Sodoma na Gomorrah. There was a man named Lot. Pakawa na mwanaume jina lake anaitwa Lot. And this man was the only man that was saved from the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Na huyu mwanaume ndio pekee yake mtu aliyeokolewa katika mji wa Sodoma na Gomorrah. On behalf of Abraham. Waniaba ya Abraham. Genesis 19:29 Mwanzo 19:29 says God destroyed the cities of that land. Mungu akaharibu miji za 
nchi hiyo and lord and lord lived in these cities naye lot akaishi katika mji huu but god had remembered abraham naye mungu akawa amemkumbuka abraham god brought lot out of the cities naye mungu akamondoa lot katika mji before he destroyed them kabla kusababisha maharabiku have you ever realized je umekwisha wai tambua the lord remembers those people who entrust their faith in him kwamba mungu anawakumbuka hao watu ambao wameweka imani kwake and he saves them before the danger happens na anawaokoa kabla hatari itukie there is a bad news going to happen somewhere kuna habari mbaya inaenda kufanyika there is something that is going to happen kuna kitu kinaenda kutukia but before it happens the lord remembers that my people are there let me rest will them so that before that happens they are going to be saved naye mungu anakumbuka kwamba kuna watu wangu wako pale wacha niwaokoe kabla ifanyike nitakuwa nimekwisha waokoa the devil has tried to kill me four times in accident ah adui amejaribu kuniangamiza katika ajali mara nne the last accident was in naivasha ajali ya mwisho imekuwa katika mji wa naivasha and the devil knew he's going to kill me so that i cannot fulfill the will of god shetani alijua na kwenda kuniangamiza ili nisijeendeleza makusudi ya mungu the day our bishop was going to be ordained siku ambayo askofu wetu alikuwa naenda kukutawashwa at runda pale runda while going to western the place known as chebosi atukienda pale western maeneo yanaitwa chebosi we had an accident the head on collision tukawa na ajali ambayo ilitukia gari kwenye nyingine and now at that particular time na kwa wakati huo when the policemen came they realized they, they, they thought that we are already dead polisi walipoingia waliweza kutambua kwamba tumekwisha angamia wote we were five people in the vehicle tulikuwa watu watano kwenye gari but no one died na hakuna mmoja alikufa because the lord had seen the assignment maana bwana alikuwa ameona kazi ile mbele and we were not to die before we finish the assignment hatungelikufa kabla kukamilisha malengo that is what god did for lord here basi hiyo ndio mungu alifanya kwa lord he remember and serves his people anakumbuka before bad thing can happen abla jambo libali tukie do you know why you are alive today je unajua kwa nini unaishi leo do you know why you have not died by that accident je unajua kwa nini hujakufa kwa hiyo ajali do you know why that fire has not burned your children je unajua kwa nini huo moto haujateketeza watu wako it is because you have not finished the work of god yet kwa sababu hujakamilisha kazi ya mungu hapa god still remembers you mungu bado anakukumbuka he remembers your husband anakumbuka mume wako many things have you gone through but god has delivered you je ni mambo ngapi umepitia na mungu amekukomboa because his god of remembering maana ni mungu wa kukumbuka he remembers his covenant anakumbuka hadi zake he remembers his promises anakumbuka hadi zake that is why he has saved you na ndio sababu umekukoa why am i living je kwa nini naishi leo why can i breathe today kwa nini nipumue leo because there is something maana kuna kitu that god wants me to know ambacho mungu anataka nijue you are not living because you want to live hauishi kwa sababu umetaka kuishi and here hapa sasa he's saving lot anaokoa lot telling abraham anamwambia abraham i cannot destroy siwezi kuharibu and he remembered him na akakumkumbuka when rachel wakati recho wanted to bear children alitaka kuwazaa watoto but could, he could not lakini naye hangeweza and we read that in genesis 3 verse 22 na tunasoma hiyo katika mwanzo mlango wa 30 mstari wa 32 22 mstari wa 22 God remembered Rachel Mungu akamkumbuka Rachel and she conceived naye akapata ujauzito God remembered Rachel Mungu akamkumbuka Rachel and he conceived na akashika mimba and then when we see that God is remembering Rachel. Na tunapoona kwamba Mungu anamkumbuka Rachel. He had gone through a process of barrenness. Alikuwa amepitia kiwango cha masiku ya utasa. According to the history of the Hebrew. Kulingana na historia ya Waebrania. Any woman that was barren was seen as a cast person in the society. Mwanamke yeyote ambaye angeonekana tasa basi huyu angeonekana ni mwanamke aliyelaaniwa katika jamii. And Jesus came to take away that curse so that we become fruitful in his presence na yesu akaja 
akaondoa hiyo laana ili tuweze kuzaa katika uwepo wake so then god remember rachel he listened to her when rachel was praying na mungu akamkumbuka rachel akamsikiza rachel alipokuwa anafanya maombezi and he made her to receive the children na akamsababisha rachel akaanza kuwapokea watoto when israel were in bondage wakati wa israeli walikuwa katika umateka in egypt katika misri they stayed there for 400 years waliishi pale kwa miaka 400 and they cried for the lord wakamlilia bwana and god heard their crying na bwana akasikia kilio chao and their crying touched his ears na kilio chao kikagusa masikio ya mungu what happened je nini lifanyika he told moses akamwambia musa i have heard the Ni, cry of my people nimesikia kilio cha watu wangu he remembered the promise that he had made with abraham in genesis chapter 12 akakumbuka ahadi zote alizofanya na abrahamu katika mwanzo mlango wa 12 the promise of abraham isaac and jacob ahadi za abrahamu isaka na yakobo because he told abraham maana akamwambia abrahamu blessing i will bless you baraka nazo nitakubariki i will multiply you nitakuzidisha and you are going to be a great nation na unakwenda kufanyika taifa kuu not just a father sio tu baba and remember that time abraham did have a child na ukumbuke wakati huo abrahamu hana hata mwana but god is telling him na he mungu hapa you are a nation wewe ni taifa how do you see yourself je unajiona vipi wewe how do you define yourself je unajiona vipi and how does god see you na mungu anakuona vipi when god looks at you mungu anapokutisama he sees you like he saw abraham as a nation anakuona kama vile aliona abraham kama taifa as a blessed man kama mwanaume mbarikiwa as a person who is going to make the multitude on this earth watu mtu ambaye anaenda kuwa na umati hapa duniani and jehovah told abraham na jehovah kamwambia abraham your people are going to be taken captive basi watu wako wanakwenda kuwekwa katika umateka but i will restore them back lakini nami mungu nitawaokoa when 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 joseph knew that promise Ah uh, Yusuf alipojua ahadi hiyo He told the Israelites Akawaambia wa Israeli When the day of deliverance comes Siku ya ukombozi itakapokuja When I will be dead Nitakapokuwa nimekufa Make sure Hakikisheni You carry my bones and bury it at our place Basi pia mumebeba mifupa zangu <laughs> na mkapeleke mkazike maeneo yetu How did Joseph know the resurrection will be there Jem Yusuf alijua vipi kwamba kutakuwa na kufufuliwa pale How did he know the rapture Alijua vipi kwamba kutakuwa na unyakusi How Aje. If it is not the revelation of the Holy Spirit Kama sio tu ufunuo wa Roho Mtakatifu But remember what I'm saying here Na ukumbuke ninachosema hapa The Lord had made a promise to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob Mungu amefanya ahadi na Abrahamu, Isaac na Yakobo Now the children of Israel they are in captivity for for 400 years Na sasa hapa wana wa Israeli wako kwenye umateka kwa miaka 400 And God remembered what he had said to his servant Abraham Naye Mungu akaja kumbuka alichosema na mtumishi wake Abraham And God remembered what he had spoken to Jacob and Isaac Mungu akakumbuka alichonena kwa Yakobo na Isaka And when he remembered that Na alipokumbuka hiyo He raised and made a man to be born called Moses. Alinua mtu ambaye anaitwa Musa so that he can go and fulfill his promise. Ili aende atimize ahadi yake. By delivering the children of Israel from Egypt. Kwa kuwakomboa wana wa Israeli toka katika Misri. We serve a God who remembers. Tunamtumikia Mungu anayewakumbuka wao. You may have done so many things and you feel like God has not been seeing. Waweza kuwa umefanya mengi na unakuja kuwa na wazo kwamba Mungu haoni. The Bible says do not stop doing good. Biblia inasema usije koma kutenda mema. For in due time the Lord 
is going to reward you. Your work is not in vain. And don't stop doing good. Because our God is a God who remembers. And he is a reward of those that doeth good. He remembered his promise. And he sent Moses to go and deliver his people. And Moses went there. It was not an easy thing to do. Before God himself sent him to go and deliver those people. Just forgive me. For having bad manners, there is a visitor at the stage. He wants to come and have fellowship with you so kindly. Talk to him. Now God is saying. Mungu anasema that I want to save these people. Kwamba nataka kuokoa watu wao. Now he has made the covenant with this man. Amefanya agano na mtu huyu. And now out of him the children of Israel they are in captivity. Na katika yeye basi wana wa Israeli wako katika umateka. But God want to bring them back. Na Mungu anataka kuwarejesha. So that he can fulfill what he wanted to do. Ili akaweze kutimiza anayotaka kufanya. And he's using Moses here so that he can fulfill his promise. But I want you to know our God does not forget anything he said. You can come to this altar and say so many words and after one week you forget. When Jacob was in problem and he ran away from his brother Esau. He went and slept at the place called Bethel. The house of bread. While sleeping there he saw the ladder that was going to heaven and here on earth. And the angels were climbing on that uh, on that ladder. Na malaika wakao wanapanda katika hiyo ngazi. But listen to this somebody. Lakini sikiza hii mtu. When Jacob realized that the place where he was sleeping was the place of God. Ah, Jacob alipotambua kwamba mahala alipokuwa analala palikuwa ni mahala pa Mungu. He said this. Akasema haya. When God you will bless my going and my coming. Kwamba Bwana utakapobariki kuenda kwangu na kurejea kwangu. And make me successful. Na kunifanya mwenye kufana. And give me everything I need in life. Na kunipa vyote ninavyotaka kwa ma when I come back, I will build for you the altar here and worship you. Don't ever make foolish promises in the presence of God and you forget you think God has forgotten. Usikawai. <laughs> Fanya ahadi za kiupumbafu kwa Mungu na ufikirie Mungu amesahau. God does not forget. Mungu wetu yeye si wa kusahau. He remembers everything you started saying the very day you believed him. Anakumbuka kila kitu licho kitamuka siku ile uliopokea uokovu. And you have made so many vows and promises and you have never fulfilled even one. Na wewe umefanya ahadi na viapo vingi ambazo hata leo moja hujatimiza. Oh, nita Nitatoa, nitatoa. When people are pledging, nitatoa, nitatoa, nitatoa. Watu wanapotoa ahadi hapa unasema nitatoa, nitatoa. And you have never given. Na ujatoa. Alafu unasema ba huloka, ba huloka, nani ya huloka? Na kisa unasema umerogwa, umerogwa, nani ya likuroga? Who bewitched you? Nani ya likuroga? You have bewitched yourself by not removing the covenant and the vow you made in the presence of God. Umejiroga mwenyewe kwa kutoa ahadi na kutokutenda ahadi yako mwenyewe mbele za mungu. I like kiluya. Napenda kiluya. 
the kiluya version says tafsiri ya kiluya inasema otava mwangu wa hublo maloma imbo simberi wanasae hava usiwe mwepesi wa kutamuka maneno mbele za Mungu kubera na saya rimwikulu na oriasi obe mundu wa mahua madidi kwa sababu Mungu yuko juu nawe uko chini basi kuwa mtu wa maneno yaliyo machache <laughs> are you listening je unasikiza hiyo Can you comprehend what I'm saying? Je, unaweza kutafuna maneno nimesema? Now listen to this. Sasa sikiza hii. Jacob is speaking here. Yakobo anazungumza hapa. And you know when you are in a problem, Mungu kinibariki. Nda kuhota milimo, na sasa nda kuimbira, na sasa I will sing, I will dance, I will do, I will do, I will, I will, I will. Ha unajua ukiwa katika hizo shida hapo ndipo utafanya ahadi zote kwamba Mungu ukinifanyia hili na mimi nitafanya hii nitafanya hii nitafanya utatoa ahadi zote. Nano dembele sema mabaso kana saa nalo kabudire eh hadiso ni ambo dalano ha hole ha hole ha hole. Sasa unajaribu kupombeleza mawazo ya Mungu kutongoza Mungu ili Mungu aone kwamba oh Harrison amesema wacha nifanye wacha nifanye wacha nifanye. Obwa dear budimu na saa manyira sote oho na hava. Ukweli ni kuwa Mungu anajua wewe hutatenda. Now this man in his problem. Sasa mwanaume huyu katika shida zake. He is telling God. Anamwambia Mungu. If you bless me in my going and my coming. Ukinibariki kwa kutoka na kurudi. I will come here and build for you an altar and worship you nitarejea hapa ni kujengea madhabahu na kukuabudu 21 years miaka 21 a man took to labor so that he can find a wife ah uh, jamaa kafanya kazi mno ili apate mke bolanga mbore 21 years miaka 21 a man is laboring to get the wife ah uh, mwanaume anafanya kazi apate mwanamke wa habola bila ilama <laughs> You know when you miss any word that I say you are deleting what I've said. <laughs> Now listen to this. 21 years. This man is working very hard so that he can win the the the, the soulmate, the soulmate. Amanaume huyu anafanya kazi sana kwa bidii ili aweze kupata mwenzake. 21 years. Miaka 21. In the time of his work he had forgotten what he had said about building the altar. Kwa wakati huo wa hiyo kazi inabidi sana apate mwanamke akawa amesahau kila alisema ya kujenga madhabahu. And God Jehovah Yahweh came to uh, Jacob. Naye Mungu Jehovah Yahweh akaja kwa Yakobo. And told Jacob. Akamwambia Yakobo Go to Bethel. Rejea pale Betheli. And build for me the altar that you said. Unijengee madhabahu ulosema. That was after 21 years. Hiyo ilikuwa ni baada ya miaka 21. 21 years. Miaka 21. Can you remember what you told God 10 years back? Je, unaweza God when you give me a job. Bwana utakaponipa kazi. I will serve you. Nitakutumikia. Are you doing it? Je, unafanya hivyo? Yes the man you wanted you have received. Have, have you remembered what you said? Je, hizo pesa ulikuwa unaombea? The, the sickness has gone. Can you remember what you told God? 21 years he's reminding Jacob. Our God is God of remembrance. Don't just talk and you think he will forget. 21 years. Go back to Bethel and build for me the altar. Rejea pale Betheli na unijengee madhabahu. <laughs> Now listen to this somebody. Sasa sikiza hii mtu. I like the Bible. Napenda Biblia. And I love it. Na naipenda sana. When God Jehovah told Jacob to go to Bethel, Mungu Jehovah alipomwambia Yakobo rejea pale Betheli. Mbara kusaacha kuna kwe hala kwe unja. Nafikiri mwanaume huyu alikana akafikiria I have everything I wanted. Niko na kila kitu nilichohitaji. I have money I am now rich. I came poor I am now rich. Niko na pesa sasa mimi ni tajiri nilikuja maskini sasa mimi ni tajiri. I can live the life I want. Naweza ishi maisha ninayotaka. Now what happened? Nini ilifanyika? He never went to Bethel but he went to Shechem and stayed there. Hakuenda alikosema Mungu Betheli alienda Shechem na akaenda akaishi pale. And bought the land and built and established himself there. Akanunua udongo pale <laughs> na akajenga na aka 
Now listen. That is what happens to people. After you have told God when you do this, I will do this. You normally run away from what God wants you to do. Baada wewe kumwambia Mungu ukifanya haya na mimi nitafanya haya, kisha baadaye wewe hutoroka na kuacha yale ulimwambia Mungu afanye. So he went to Shechem. Akaenda Shechem. Go to land and establish himself there. Akanunua shamba na kuweka makao pale. You know God cannot forget. He remembers. Wajua Mungu hawezi sahau, anakumbuka. He allowed the only daughter of this man to be raped. Aliruhusu <laughs> bindi wa Yakobo anajisiwe. And caused havoc in the land so that it cannot contain him until he vacates and go to Bethel and build the altar. Na kusababisha eneo hilo likamchukie na hangeweza kuishi pale hadi arejee pale na ajenge madhabahu. That is why in chapter 33:34 na ndiyo sababu katika mlango wa 33 na 34 of genesis ya mwanzo, you get what i'm saying in chapter 35 he's telling the people now please i am now willing to go and do what i told god basi katika mlango wa 35 sasa hapa yakobo anakubali anasema sasa nimeitikia na kwenda kufanya yale umesema genesis 35 And he tells his people to please remove all the idols and everything that does not please God and bury them down. Na anawaambia watu wake wakaharibu zile miungu zote na kila kitu ambacho hakimpendezi Mungu na waachane naye. So that they can be clean and build for God the altar. Ili wawe wasafi na wamjengee Mungu madhabahu. Listen. Sikiza. God does not forget what you said. Mungu hawezi sahau yale ulisema. How many things have you ever said foolishly and knowingly in the presence of God and you forgotten and today they are haunting you? Ni mambo mangapi umekwishawahi yasema kiupumbafu na pia ukaja ukayasahau na leo yanakuangamisha and today you have casted all the demons in your life and nothing is changing na leo umekemea mapepo yote kwa maisha yako na hakuna kitu kinafanyika in busia you will always hear riswa 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 katika jimbo la busia utasikia wale waki wakikemea waki wakisema riswa riswa there was a bishop called uh, mukaga from tesoland and he was a bishop of uh, hosanna most high kuna skofu anaitwa askofu mokaga na alikuwa ni wakutoka katika eneo la jimbo la busia maeneo ya teso one day he died siku moja alikufa and again he resurrected na tena akafufuka so he says in his dying na alisema katika kukufa kwake he went and asked god alienda akamuliza mungu what does it mean riswa basi neno riswa inamaanisha nini why do people say riswa Mbona watu wanakemea shetani wakisema rizwa? And God told Mukaga, Mungu these are his Mukaga, words. Haya ni maneno ya Mukaga. God told Mukaga, na Mungu akamwambia Mukaga that rizwa is a term of scaring the devil but not casting him away. Kwamba rizwa ni neno <laughs> la kumtishia shetani lakini si kumkembea. Can you scare the devil? Je, unaweza mtishia shetani? Now what am I saying? Je, nasema nini? The problem with so many people, shida na watu wengi. Our God remembers everything he said about your life. Mungu wetu anakumbuka kila kitu alichosema kuhusu maisha He remembers about his promises and covenant and everything he has said in his word. Anakumbuka ahadi zake na nadiri zote alizosema katika neno lake. That is why 21 years he can still remember what Jacob said and what he told Jacob. Na ndio sababu miaka 21 bado anakumbuka alichosema uh, Yakobo na pia akamkumbusha Yakobo. Today leo I want you to remember everything you have ever said you will do and you have not done. Nataka ukumbuke lolote lile umekwishawahi sema utafanya na hujalifanya. Because God will do his part but you have to do your part. Maana Mungu atafanya sehemu yake nawe unapaswa kufanya sehemu yake. We are not coming here to do circus. Hatukuje hapa kwa sababu ya kufanya sarakasi. Our God is a serious God. Mungu wetu ni Mungu aliye katika biashara. He's a God who means what he says. Mungu anayemaanisha anachokisema. He's not a man that can lie. Si mwanadamu wadanganye. Now listen. Sasa sikiza. When Mary conceived Jesus by the Spirit. Wakati a Maria anapata ujauzito wa Yesu Kristo katika kiroho. She praised God who remembered his mercy. 
alimsifia Mungu aliyekumbuka huruma zake. That is in Luke chapter 1 verse 54 and 55. Katika Luka mlango wa kwanza 54 na 55. He remembered alikumbuka. When he conceived he said, I praise God who remembered his mercy. Aliposhika ujauzito anasema namshifu Mungu aliyekumbuka huruma zake. And Samson the son of Manoah na Samsoni mwana wa Manoa when he wanted to die alipotaka kufa he asked god to remember him only once alimuuliza mungu amkumbuke tu siku moja so that he can avenge ili akaweze kulipisha kisasi now listen sasa sikiza our god is god of remembrance basi mungu wetu ni mungu wa kumbukumbu he will never forget what he ever said about your life hata wai sahau alichosema kuhusu maisha yako that is why when the servants of god speak words upon my life i note them down na ndiyo sababu wakati watumishi wa Mungu wanazungumza maneno katika maisha yangu mimi huyanakili chini. When God remembers you he puts you at the right place. Mungu anapokukumbuka anakuweka eneo hilo bora. When God remembers you he puts you at the right place. He knows how to relocate and to locate you. Mungu anapokukumbuka anajua kukuhamisha kutoka eneo hili hadi eneo lingine anafahamu kukuhamisha kuku, vizuri When God remembers you he crowns you with his glory Mungu anapokukumbuka yeye hukufunika na utukufu wake People had despised Hana Watu walikuwa wamekwisha darau Hana but he crowned him with the glory of giving him at the, 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 the boy Akamfika taji kwa kumpa mtoto kijana Samuel Samuel and we read about his testimony in the Bible Na tunasoma kuhusu shahuda zake katika Biblia When God remembers you he exalts you Mungu anapokukumbuka yeye hukuinua He exalts you Yeye anakuinua When God remembers you he honors you he gives you honor Mungu anapokukumbuka yeye anakupatia heshima He gives you honor you are not honored anywhere but God makes and commands people to honor you Ana kuheshimisha wewe hauheshimiwi popote lakini Mungu anasababisha watu kukuheshimu The people will honor you Watu watakuheshimu You have never been honored Wewe hujawahi heshimiwa But God knows how to make people to honor you Mungu anafahamu namna ya kuwasababisha wanaume wa kuheshimu And that is why Na ndiyo sababu The Lord remembers his people Mungu anawakumbuka watu When wake. God remembers you he restore you and everything you have lost Mungu anapokukumbuka basi anakurejesha na vyote ambavyo umepoteza He restores everything and everything you have lost. Anarejesha vyote na vyote ambavyo umepoteza. He restores. Mungu urejesha. When God will remember you. Mungu atakapokukumbuka. You will receive everything you have lost. Utapokea vyote ambavyo umepoteza. When God remembers you. Mungu atakapokukumbuka. He is going to bring everything you are to receive. Anakwenda kurejesha vyote ulivyokuwa unapaswa kuvipikea because is a god who remembers bana ni mungu anayekumbuka when god remembers you mungu anapokumbuka everything that is scattered around chochote ambacho kilitawanyika you will bring them together basi wewe utavirejesha you will collect them together utavikusanya pamoja the things that are scattered vitu ambavyo vimetawanyika in your life katika maisha the lord will recollect all of those things mungu atavikusanya hivyo vyote because god remembers his promise maana mungu anakumbuka hadi zote when god remembers you mungu atakapokukumbuka by design he give you grace to be there hapo mahala ambapo upo alitaka ukue pale atakupatia neema ya kutosha we kuwa pale and the very place you are disgraced na pale mahali ambako ulizushika you are disgraced uliaibishwa uliaibishwa pale he give he will give you grace to be there 
basi maeneo yako ya aibu Mungu atakupatia neema ya kuwa pale pale We have people who have been disgraced in life for so many years Kuna watu ambao wamekuwa katika aibu kwa miaka mingi And we have things that can bring uh, uh, disgrace in your life Na pana vitu ambavyo vitaleta aibu kwa maisha yako And you feel like you don't want to talk to anybody and you don't want to associate with anybody Na unahisi ni kana kwamba hutaki kuzungumza na mtu yote na hutaki kuwasiliana na mtu yote When God remembers you Mungu atakapokumbuka He will give you grace in those area you have been disgraced Atakupatia neema kwa hizo eneo ambazo umekuwa na aibu And even those people that were trying to disgrace you they will be surprised Basi na hata wale ambao wamekuwa na kuaibisha watasalia katika mtandao Because God has remembered you Ana Mungu amekukumbuka God is not God that forgets Mungu si Mungu anaisahau God is God that remembers Mungu ni Mungu wa kumbukumbu When he remembers you atakapokukumbuka people will know watu watajua there is something that god has done in your life ana kitu mungu amekifanya kwa maisha yako it is no longer a secret si siri tena people must see watu lazima waone to glorify your god walitukuze watukuze mungu wako because he's a god maana ni mungu who can be seen ambaye anaweza kuonekana through what he's doing kwa kile anachokifanya that is today na ndio sababu leo i am saying nasema Don't try to think that God forgotten your family. That God forgotten what you have been praying for. It may have taken so long. But he remembers what he said. It may have taken years. But God is a God who remembers. He has not forgotten you. And he will not forget. You are still in his mind mawazo yake and his plans is still on mipango zake zingali ziko katika kuendelea he that began this good work yeye aliyeanzisha kazi hii njema he will make sure he fulfills basi atahakikisha amekamilisha so no matter how disgraced you are today kwa hivyo bila kujali umeaibika kiwango kipi leo no matter how things have not been working bila kujali ni vipi vitu havijakuwa vikifanya kazi he will remember you mungu atakukumbuka and in this service today na katika ibada hii leo I want you to tell God Nataka umwambie Mungu Remember my marriage Kumbuka ndoa yangu Remember my children Kumbuka watoto wangu Remember my place of work Kumbuka maeneo yangu ya kazi Remember my business Kumbuka biashara yangu Remember my husband Kumbuka mume wangu Remember my wife Kumbuka mke wangu Remember our family Kumbuka jamii There is something that is pesting your heart Kuna kitu ambacho kina moyo wako And I want you to tell God Na nataka umwambie Mungu You have said in your word that you remember kwamba umesema kwa neno lako utatukumbuka Remember me O oh Lord Kumbuka mimi e bwana And do something O oh Lord Na uje kufanya kitu e so bwana So that your name can be glorified Ili jina lako litukuzwe He is God Yeye ni Mungu He remember Yeye anakumbuka When he remember Na atakapokumbuka He will do something Atafanya jambo When he remembered Noah Alipokumbuka Noah Something happened Kitu kilifanyika And Noah sacrificed Naye Noah akatoa dhabihu And God made a covenant with Noah. Naye Mungu akafanya ngano na Musa. By laying a rainbow on heaven. Kwa kuweka pinde la mvua mbinguni. And said from today. Na akasema kwanza leo. I will not destroy the human race again. Basi sitaharibu kisasi cha mwanadamu tena. What is it that is making you to cry every day? Je, ni lipi linalokufanya kubaki katika kilio kila siku? This service of today. Ibada hii ya leo. There is something God wants to do. Kuna kitu Mungu ataka kukifanya God is remembering somebody Mungu anamkumbuka mtu It may have taken 21 years like Jacob Inaweza kuwa imechukua miaka 21 kama Yakobo But God is saying Kini Mungu anasema Go back to Bethel Rejea pale Bethel Because I can remember what you said Maana naweza kumbuka ulichosema What have you ever said and you have not done Je ni lipi umekwisha wai tamka na hujawahi ilifanya Maybe that is the cause of your delay Labda hiyo ndo sababu ya kuchelewa kwako It is the time ni wakati to do your part kufanya sehemu yako And God will do his part Naye Mungu atafanya sehemu yake Amen Asante The name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah Praise the Lord. Tukiwa tu katika hiyo hali nataka usimame miguuni mwako. Tumishwa Mungu amekuambia kumbuka. Kumbuka mpendwa, kumbuka. Kumbuka ni nini? Ni nadhiri gani uliyoweka mbele za Bwana? Nimekuambia sio tena mambo na kuombewa, sio tena mambo na unabii, 
sio tena mambo na kutabiriwa manabii walitabiri wakamaliza kazi yao waombaji waliomba wakakamilisha kazi yao kazi iliyobaki ni wewe twende mbele za bwana mwambie bwana kumbuka Nimepewa nafasi nyingine tena Bwana mbele zako nikumbushe Mungu kama kuna mambo niliyosahau unajua hata Yakobo alikuwa amesahau alisahau ya kwamba kuna nadhiri aliyofanya mbele zako baba ya kwamba atarudi Betheli na kaweze kukutolea kukutolea saka na dhabihu ila ambaye alikuwa ameweka nadhiri yake mbele zako Jehova na nyenyekea mtakatifu katika dhabahu lako leo Yesu na kuita mwana wa Mungu Yesu mwana wa Mungu Yesu mwana wa Mungu Yesu mwana wa Mungu Batimaye alikuita kukamuuliza ni nini unataka nikufanyie licha ya kuwa ulijua Batimaye angetaka kuona lakini ulimuuliza kwamba ni nini unataka nikufanyie Batimaye akasema nataka nione tena wenda nimepofushwa baba nikakosa kujua yale ni Nilionena mbele zako nilinena kwa upumbavu baba nikumbushe Mungu nikumbushe wewe ni Mungu mtakatifu siwezi nikakulinganisha na maneno ya kinywa changu maana mimi ni mwanadamu tu kazi ya mikono yako nashuka chini baba nikumbushe baba nikumbushe yawe nikumbushe Mungu wangu nikumbushe Bwana nadhiri niliyofanya mbele zako kwa ajili ya uzao wangu ambao inafanyika kizuizi machoni pako bwana nisipokee muujiza wangu nikumbushe baba nikumbushe Mungu wa huruma nikumbushe Mungu wa Yakobo nikumbushe bwana wa mabona nikumbushe baba wa mbinguni he Mungu nisije nikawa nimebarikiwa nikasahau mapenzi yako wewe ni Mungu uliyesema utaishi kwa nyumba ambayo haukujenga utavuna mizabibu ambayo na kuita Mungu wa rehema nikumbushe baba nikumbushe bwana kama kuna nadhiri niliyofanya mbele zako kwa ajili ya kazi yako kwa ajili ya huduma wako na leo baba nimeona mambo imekuwa sawa nikawa nimesahau nikachukua direction nyingine ya maisha baba nikasahau yaliyo mapenzi yako remind me o oh lord remind me jehovah nikumbushe bwana I am ready Lord. I am ready my father. I am ready Jehovah. Niko tayari Bwana. Niko tayari Baba. Nikumbushe mwamba wangu. Nikumbushe Baba. Usipo nikumbusha. Nitaishi katika huu pofu. Ona Baba vile shetani anataka niaibike. Mutego wake ni ya kwamba mimi niaze kuaibika. Baba niokoe. Baba niokoe. Baba nikumbushe. Nimefungua masikio yangu. Nena baba na moyo wangu. Nena baba na mawazo yangu. Ni nini meri nilichokiweka chini baba? Kikaandikwa mbele zako mtakatifu. Kwa ajili ya kazi yako baba. Kwa ajili ya huduma yako shilo. Na leo nimefika mahali nimekaa nikasema niko sawa e bwana na we Mungu nakumbuka unasema mwanangu usipotimiza hili ni mara ngapi nitakuita baba e baba nikasema umeniita kuimba na watu wako Ukanipatia nadhiri moja ya kwamba viwete watatembea ya kwamba viziwi watasikia ya kwamba tasa watazaa ya kwamba wagonjwa watapona ni wapi baba nilienda kozoro ni wapi nilipotea ni wapi nilikosa ni wapi nilikosa niliwapi nilipokosa kutimiza yaliyo mapenzi yako baba tasa wakakosa 
kuza juu yangu viwata wakakosa kutembea kwa ajili yangu visiwi wakakosa kusikia kwa ajili yangu vipafu wakakosa kuona shilo 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 Mungu wa Mary uko wapi baba uko wapi baba ninongoneze bwana nongoneze katika masikio yangu nisikie vile utakavyo nikumbusha bwana nikumbusha baba kama nimechukua njia moyo sio yako nikumbusha baba maana kuna njia inayoonekana machoni pa mwanadamu kuwa sawa lakini mwisho wake ni mangamizo e mungu e mungu e mungu we e mungu e mungu wangu e baba yangu e baba nikumbushe baba na jilaza mbele zako remind me oh lord <laughs> Remind me Jova Evi wote wanataka miguu yao ili watembe Tasa wanataka tumba za wazee Nikumbushe baba Nikumbushe wapi Nikumbushe Mungu wa Yakobo Nikumbushe niko tayari Tukumbushe Bwana Nikumbushe baba. Ah. Tumetembea kwa nyumba za manabii siku nyingi. Ili watu ondolea imbu inayotuandama. Tumeombewa kwa muda mrefu baba. Ili aibu ipate kutuondokea. Bila ya kujua baba umetupatia funguo. Ya kufungua malango yetu ya baraka. Ili yaondoe adui katika maisha yetu. Funguo hii baba ifungie adui wetu nje ya lango lako la baraka baba ndani mwetu Haleluya 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 Haleluya. Naimizika ndani mwangu wa kwamba niseme hivi. Umepitia kilio cha maisha. Umeombewa lakini hauoni jibu. Umemuita Mungu usiku wa manane lakini haujaona jawabu. Umekaa ukajiuliza maswali mengi sana. Na nasikia hata moyo wako unasema Afadhali nisingezaliwa. Afadhali nisingeishi. Afadhali nisingeolewa. Umeanza kulaumu mume wako. Umeweza kulaumu mke wako. Umeweza kulaumu biashara. Umeweza kulaumu marafiki. Lakini Mungu anasema kuna nadhiri moja tu, moja tasio mbili, moja uliofanya mbele zake. Ambayo Shetani amepata nafasi kwa sababu ya hiyo nadhiri. Na amesema na wewe usipotimiza hii hautaondoka kwa hii. Naye Mungu anasema kwamba yeye ni wa rehema. Yeye ni wa huruma. Akona uwezo wa kukuondolea aibu ya maisha. Chukua nafasi watumishi wa Mungu bado wako katika nyumba ya Bwana. Songa mbele, hatujawahi songa mbele ya madhabahu ya Bwana kwa nyumba hii. But I'm feeling in my heart ya kwamba leo hii ni siku ya kusonga mbele kufanya hatua na kusema baba ni mimi nilifanya nadhiri ya kukufanyia kazi katika nyumba yako na ili hali hakuna hata siku moja maana ulinipatia biashara na mimi nikakaa kwa biashara yangu nikasema basi nimetosheka kumbe Mungu haukuniitia biashara fanya hatua ya kusonga mbele tusonge hapa mbele kama kuna nadhiri uliyofanya mbele za Mungu songa mbele ya madhabahu haya ili watumishi wa Mungu wakapate kukufungua kutokana na hiyo nadhiri. Kama kuna jambo ulilolifanya na unajua kwamba sio jema. 
ulifanya kwa kuto kujua na limekufungia limesababisha wewe hausongi hatua watu wanasonga lakini wewe unashindwa mbona mimi sisongi baba songa tu mbele songa mbele kuna nafasi songa mbele dada yangu songa mbele kama kuna mwingine bado uko nyuma unasema kwamba hakika haya maisha mama nimechoka nayo nimechoka naona hapana kuna kitu nilisema na sija kitimiza songa mbele walioanguka miguuni mwa Yesu kama kina Mary Magdalena machozi yao yakafika miguuni mwa Yesu waliondoka wakiwa wanawake wenye busara walienda na hata siku ya, mu, ya Yesu Kristo kufufuka maandiko yanasema kwamba wanawake hao ndio waliokuwa wa kwanza kumuona katika ufufuo kwa sababu ya vile walijitokeza na wakasema aya masina wakajikubali na Yesu akasema na mimi nataka niyapanguze machozi haya kwako enda mbele za Mungu hata kama haukumbuki ile ambayo nadhiri uliyofanya mbele za Mungu mwambie Bwana na kuja na nadhiri yangu na siikumbuki baba lakini moyo wangu naniambia kuna jambo nililosema mbele zako naanguka miguuni mwako baba nishamee na ukaniondolee na nasikia ndani yangu ya kwamba baada ya wiki hii kuna mlipuko wa mambo kuna mlipuko wa mambo kuna biashara zinafunguliwa kuna maisha yanachukuliwa katika kiwango kingine kuna mioyo inafunguliwa kuna maisha yanabadilishwa kuna nafsi zinafanywa upya kuna machozi yanapanguzwa kuna mioyo zinaguzwa kuna nafsi zinafikiwa pendo mkono wa Bwana sio mfupi ukose kukufikia wewe maandiko nasema ni dhambi zetu maandiko nasema ni nadhiri zetu zimejenga ukuta kati yetu na Mungu wetu eh hey. hey, Mungu Mungu wa huruma ni Mungu wa huruma mlilie baba yuko na uwezo mehisi ndani yangu ya kwamba call for an outer call and god is ready to perform his miracle he is seated and throned high above he is ready to perform something in your life just give your life to jesus pour your tears to jesus hata kama uko mbali piga tu magoti yako mahali ulipo yesu yuko tayari anahudumia moyo wako anahudumia maisha yako pendwa haumpigi mwanadamu magoti unampigia yesu unamuishia bwana asha si watu saidie watenda kazi wa nyumba ya bwana watu saidie katika nyumba ya bwana maana naona kufunguliwa maana naona kuwekwa huru maana naona kushatwa maana naona maisha mtu akiwekwa huru naona mtu akifunguliwa jamani hey wewe ni yawe wewe ni yawe tuko mbele zako bwana hata meri niko mbele zako baba hata mimi niko mbele zako bwana nadhiri ambazo zimezuia kazi yako kwenda mbele pendwa tuende mbele za bwana nasikia mungu anasema nasikia sikio lake si nzito baba tusikie leo baba tusikie leo tumeanguka miguuni mwako tumeanguka mbele zako bwana wewe ni mungu wa huruma baba sikia maombi leo tunayoomba bali hapa watoto wako wamekubali baba mambo haya yamekuwa kizuizi nadhiri walizozifanya bwana wengine walifanya kwa sababu watu wengine wanafanya na shetani akapata kingi ya kusimamia na kusema ya kwamba wewe ulisema hili na hujalitimiza yesu wewe ni wa huruma turumie baba turumie yawe turumie mungu wangu kama kanisa tumesongea kama kanisa tumesongea miguuni mwako bwana
Usikia e maombi Ujibuye kwa moto Baba Umuami nifu Usikia e maombi Ujibuye kwa moto Wana Umuaminifu, umuaminifu Yuko mungu mbinguni Asikia ema ombi yetu Sema yupo, yupo mungu mbinguni Hayajibu ema ombi yetu Oh baba, yupo mungu mbinguni Asikia ema ombi yetu Shema yupo, yupo mungu minguni Hayajibu ye maombi yetu Tunapomba, tunapomba Asikia, hanajibu Tunapomba, asikia maombi yetu Tunapomba, tunapomba Asikia anajibu Tunapomba Asikia maombi Tunapomuomba yeye Tunapomba Asikia anajibu Tunapomba Asikia maombi Shema tunapoomba, tunapoomba, hey, asikia, anajibu. Tunapoomba, asikia, maomi, napomuomba, yeah, yeah. Tunapoomba, asikia, anajibu. Tunapoomba Asikia maomi Sema yupo Yupo mungu minguni Asikia e maomi Sema yupo Yupo mungu minguni Hayajibu e maomi Tunapoomba Tunapoomba Asikia Anajibu Tunapoomba Asikia maombi Tunapomuomba yeye Tunapoomba Asikia Anajibu Tunapoomba Asikia maombi yetu Asikia e maomi Hajibuye kwa moto Wana ni muaminifu Asikia e maomi Hajibuye kwa moto Wana Umuaminifu Inuwa mikono ya kokwa Yesu Napo mkaribisha mtumishu wa mungu Ili ya kaweze kutuongoza katika maombi Nasikia maombi ya toba Ili tukaweze kufunguliwa Kutokana na hiyo Kizuizi amba imefanyika laana Ime upgrade to be a curse Inayo sababisha stagnation Katika maisha yetu Lakini mungu wanasema yuko tayari Kuondoa Ili tubaki uhuru Katika jina la Yesu Kristo I just want us to pray Nirahisi kueka Nadhiri mbele za mungu Iraisi kuongea kitu na kusahau. Ambia buwana 
Mungu wewe unakumbusha watu Bible inasema Yesu akaambia wanafundi nitaka poenda kwa baba atatuma roho mtakatifu naye atakapokuja atawakumbusha mambo yote nilio ya nena atayafanya kukumbuka hata yale ulikuwa umesahau sema bwana Yesu ninakuhitaji ndani ya moyo wangu baba kuna nadhiri na maagano ambayo niliyafanya katika moyo wangu lakini nikayasahau sijayatimiza bado Bwana ninaomba unisamehe na uniondolee hayo maagano na hiyo nadhiri maana siwezi kuitimiza na kuomba leo Bwana unifungue ili niweze kuwa huru Bwana nikumbuke kumbuka watoto wangu kumbuka nyumba yangu na kazi ya mikono yangu ili ikapate kunawiri tena ninajifungua ili nisije nikawa na kikwazo chochote cha kunizuia leo ninaamini ya kwamba Bwana unanikumbuka na kuna kitu kinaenda kufanyika katika maisha yangu katika jina la Yesu So just believe as we pray Baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo Ninaliabudu jina lako nikilisifu na kulitukuza Baba hawa ni watu wako ambao tumesimama mbele zako Bwana Hatuna wema wa kutosha lakini Mungu kupitia neema na rehema zako umetusamehe Kwa hivyo Mungu hautumi neno pasipo kuwa na sababu Na ndipo Baba ninaomba ukafuatilie neno lako ukapate kulitimiza Bwana kumbuka jamii hizi. Kumbuka watumishi wako hawa ambao umewakusanya kwa kusudi lako. Kwamba Mungu unaenda kuwakumbuka Bwana. Unakumbuka ndoa zao. Unakumbuka watoto wao. Unakumbuka maisha yao. Wengine wamepitia ugumu, wengine wamedharauliwa, wengine wamepitia aibu, wengine wametengwa, wengine wanakungangana. Lakini Bwana ninanena siku ya leo hawatakuwa vile walikuwa tena maana kuna jambo jipya kuna milango inafunguliwa kuna uregesho unaregesha mali yao unaregesha fedha yao unaregesha baraka zao zinarejea vitu vyao vinaregeshwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo mahali popoto walikuwa wamefinyiliwa hawatafinyiliwa tena Mahali walikuwa na kilio hawatalia tena Mahali waliona kuaibika hawataibika tena maana Mungu na wajibu na unasimama pamoja nao ili wakapige hatua Baba ninakupenda Baba ninakuheshimu kwa sababu bingu liko wazi na Bwana ukawanyeshe baraka zako Asante kwa imani ambayo tuko nayo maana kuna mambo mapya na makuu ambayo yanatendeka Pokea sifa mwana wa Mungu na ukaweze kuinuliwa kwa jina la Yesu ninaomba na hata kuamini Amen God bless you celebrate Jesus Hallelujah Praise Tena nasikia ndani yangu ni kuambie Whatever you have done pia bado ni nadhiri Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Umevunja nadhiri moja na ukafanya nadhiri nyingine. Praise the Lord. Umefanya na hatua ya kusema ya kwamba God I'm going back to Bethel. Si ndio? Naomba ya kwamba before uondoke kwa hii nyumba, tell God, 
before tuketi chini nataka umwambie Mungu hii nadhiri ambayo nimefanya ya kurudi Betheli nisifike njiani maana pia ni safari ya kurudi Betheli usifike njiani ukapendezwa na shamba lingine tena ukasimama kujenga hapo tumaambiwa ni wapi ni Betheli Bwana Yesu asifiwe mara nyingi watumishi wa Mungu ama manabii wa Mungu wamekuwa kielekeza watu kusema ya kwamba toa pesa fulani na hakuelekezi utoke hapo mpaka utoe mpaka utoe mpaka ufike mahali unae anakuachia njiani praise the lord ukishatoa anakwambia hiyo imeisha hivyo haijaisha maana ni safari umeanza itaisha siku ile yakoba alifika betheli na akajenga madhabahu ya Mungu pale praise the lord ndio Mungu akakubaliana na yeye kwamba sasa you have done it so hii pia ni nadhiri nataka tu tumshukuru Mungu mwambie Mungu ni asante maana roho wako vile mtumishi wa Mungu ameomba ameshashuka ndani yangu na anaenda kunisaidia kufika Betheli yangu na nitakapoinua baba hiyo madhabahu ya Betheli vile anainuka ndani mwangu sasa vile anaanza kujengeka ndani mwangu sasa shetani asije tena akapatia macho yangu tamaa ya kuangalia huku na huku nisaidie baba mpaka siku ya Kristo Yesu mwambie bwana kusaidie akusaidie nisaidie bwana nisaidie mpaka nihakikishe kwamba dhabahu lako limesimama na limeinuka na matunda haya yakianza kuonekana ndani mwangu wacha nishuhudie pia nikumbuke kushuhudia kwamba kuna Mungu aliyenitoa mahali ambapo nilikuwa nimekimbilia akanileta nikaanza baba kukuinulia dhabahu lako mahali hapa na hili dhabahu ndio linasababisha mazuri haya asante Yesu Asante Mungu. Asante Bwana. Na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kushukuru. Pigia Yesu makofi mazuri. Pendwa hayo sio makofi. I'm seeing celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! 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 Glory be to Jesus. Maana naona watu wakienda ku celebrate. Praise the Lord. Amen. Naona watu wakitoka hapa na kuanza kufurahia. Kwa hivyo usipige makofi kama mtu hajui, yani unapiga tu kwa sababu unaona ni kama hakuna kitu imefanyika. You are going to celebrate. Praise the Lord. Amen. Naomba tukae chini ni mkaribishe dada yetu Christabel ili akaweze kuendelea na mkutano kutuelekeza tufike paka mwisho wa mkutano na ibada yetu ya siku ya leo. Karibu sana my sister. God bless you. Amen. Bwana Yesu Kristo asifiwe. Tunashukuru kwa hilo neno ambalo tumepokea siku ya leo maana neno ni chakula cha roho cha roho. Sasa ni wakati wa kutoa matoleo. Na vile ambavyo tumesikiza neno, toa matoleo yako kulingana na vile umepokea uzito wa neno. Amen. 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 Unajua tukifikanga hapo watu wapendangi hiyo injili. Amen. Amen. Tusikuwe busy sana. Tulete sadaka zetu. Nikiwaalika waimbaji. Kuja na matoleo yako na ukitoa tu matoleo yako kuwa na ombi moyoni mwako sikuje tu kuweka. Kuwa na ombi moyoni mwako ya kwamba Mungu unisaidie niweze nikafika wapi Eh atakuwa tunasikiza neno niweze nikafika wapi Betheli amen kwa hivyo tukuje tu na sadaka zetu stability to him
tutaenda
Wala mba Luanda lo mutinyu wa senda ku Luanda yu Ya Mba Luanda senda ku Masia wa senda ku Luanda Mba Luanda China senda ku ya senda ku Burere Mba Luanda Luanda lo akanga wa senda ku Luanda Walanda senda ku Masia wa senda ku Luanda Walanda senda ku Jehovah wa senda ku Luanda Senda ku Yesu wa senda ku Luanda Hewenda senda ku Masia wa senda ku Muliro Walanda muiri na senda ku ya senda ku Muliro Walanda ya ina senda ku ya senda ku Burere na kushukuru kwa sababu ya ibada hii. Asante kwa wema wako na uaminifu wako mfalme. Asante kwa kila kipindi mahali hapa Jehova. Asante kwa vyote ambavyo umetutendea. Asante kwa sababu ya neno lako Bwana. Asante maana mfalme mfalme unaenda kutukumbusha kurudi bedhele. Na maisha yetu hayatabaki vile alivyokuwa tena. Asante kwa mwanzo mpya katika maisha yetu Bwana. Asante kwa ile ambayo umekusudia kutenda ndani ya maisha yetu. Pokea sifa na utukufu maana wewe ni Mungu. Hakuna Mungu mwingine aliye kama wewe. Baba wiki hili tunapoanza mfalme, enenda pamoja nasi tena. Tutangulie Bwana mabwana. Utuifadhi na utulinde Jehova. Tuzingine na utufunike kwa damu ya Yesu. Pokea sifa maana wewe ni Mungu. Kila ombi ambalo limeombwa mahali hapa mfahamu. Tunaamini ya kwamba limetendeka katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Pokea sifa kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu. Kwa jina kula Yesu Kristo naomba takuamini. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.